him and say, thank you, donors. <laughs> thank you, donors. Thank, thank you, donors. you, donors. Thank you so much for our treatment grant. Thank you, Limelight. Thank you, Limelight. <laughs> you have been key to my children's healing, and we appreciate you so much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Green White Checkered TV. Tonight we have a very special event tonight, the Steve Gottschalk Memorial 91 here at North Wilkesboro Speedway. I am Gael Brooks, and tonight I have with me Carl Henderson and Josh Lassen. They're going to be pretty much calling the shots for the race. I'll be chiming in here and there, and then also bringing some drivers in to, to chat, I'll say, because unfortunately it's one of those things where... We want to bring people together, but it's a really tough time as well, uh, remembering our good friend and and um, com competitor, Steve Godstruck. So, um, and also we're partnering with the Limelight Foundation, raising money for Lyme disease awareness. And um, it, it's gone gotten bigger than I could have ever hoped and imagined. And I'm, I'm super th grateful for it. So uh, I'm going to kick it off over here, hand it over to Carl Henderson. Um, before we get things going, we still got about 12 minutes left in practice for qualifying, and then we'll go over the, how this race is going to be going tonight um, in this one. Thanks, Gael. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, as Gael mentioned, we're here for a special event. We gather not only for what promises to be a fantastic race, uh, but to pay tribute to a dear friend and true titan of our community, Steve Godschalk. He's a de he was a dedicated racer and a passionate commentator. Steve's journey was cut short by Lyme disease earlier this year. Steve was more than a competitor. He was the epitome of sportsmanship and joy in the sport that we love. His enthusiasm for racing was infectious, and his commentary resonated with so many. Tonight, we honor his passion, his dedication, and the lasting impact he left on our lives. So tonight, let's fill the air with the roar of our engines, with the resonance of our race paid tribute to Steve's legacy. Going forward, let's race in a way that reminds ourselves and each other that Steve's spirit hasn't left the track. It hasn't left us at all, not really. It lives on within us and reverberates each time we hit the track. Welcome to the Steve Godshop Memorial 91 right here at historic North Wilkesboro Speedway. And I'm very glad to be here with you guys tonight and Josh Laston as well, how are you doing? You know what? I'm just happy to have been asked to participate in this event. Steve, when I first joined the league racing side of iRacing back three years ago, Carl and I were broadcasting for a league. And after we ran our portion of the league, which was the lowest tier, I would jump over to the top tier, their practice sessions that Carl and I broadcast. And nearly every time I'd be there, that's where Steve was. Steve would give me some pointers on how to handle the cup car at the time, which was the Gen 6, which I had no experience because I was a road racer just going into ovals. And just the fact that I showed up, no one, someone he didn't even know, and he was just there to help and get things going, just really made it to where I fell in love with this community. And here I am three years later just paying tribute to a great man yeah you know S steve was always uh, really um entertaining in the area 51 um car that shall not be named anymore um when he races that he broadcast along with gael here um because uh, he would come out on track with us beforehand and uh, i feel like him and i were always right there next to each other and he w he would tease me all the time <laughs> um anytime he would put down a faster lap he made sure that i knew it um but uh, a great friend of many uh dearly missed um and and i think we're gonna put on a heck of a show for him tonight it, it is definitely going to be a brilliant evening the tour modifieds that these guys are running tonight i mean nothing at north wilkesboro is a bad time but these cars have so much power so much traction it's going to be a great show for you all out there watching tonight and even more than that like gael said we're raising a lot of money for lyme disease and the research the awareness 
and more specifically to ensure that a lot of people can get the care they need after contracting it. Absolutely, and um, I, I obviously super important things there. Um, I'm, I'm very glad you know, for the organizers and thankful for, for everything that's been put together here because I think this is an important thing to call out um, and just really ha happy to be a part of this. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Is it's it's something that I mean I don't think a lot of people know about, and I think that's what's what's great about it. And I said actually, while we do that, I said, I'll pull up some of the info for for those that are watching or hopefully going to be watching later on. And I know a lot of drivers are probably going to rewatch it afterwards, um, but it's basically some info to kind of give you some info about what is Lyme disease, how do you prevent it, um, and what do you do some symptoms, what do you do um, afterwards. So um, yeah, it's just there's there's a lot to know about it and. And luckily, I mean, it, if you catch it quickly, I mean, it's, it's something that they sh you should be able to treat. But I mean, the symptoms are it's it's definitely a scary thing. So you have to be aware. And when you go out outside and in the wild, I mean, you have to be be careful about what you wear and everything like that to to protect yourself from ticks to avoid um, to avoid catching Lyme disease. And so, yeah, so um, we'll have this up now. So I'll put it up again, I'm sure, later on in the broadcast as well. Um, and I, I, yeah, I also, I mean, I just got to really, really thank obviously you two for hopping in. And it's one of those things, it was, it was probably the easiest decision any of us have made. It's like, Hey, do you want to do this? Yes. Like there was, there was no second guessing. It was like, is there, is there not, is there, there's no wedding or anything going on? Yeah. I mean, basically it's like the only thing that probably stop it. So, um, the community, the, what we have, it's been amazing. Um, the limelight foundation, we've been reaching out to, they actually reached out to us when we mentioned what we were doing. Um, and they've been instrumental getting us logos and videos and pamphlets and information. Um, they've, they've gone above and beyond. I've, I've been so happy with what we've been able to just accomplish in these few weeks um, once we started getting this organized with Limelight Foundation. So really, really want to thank them. But um, I think what we should probably do here, guys, let's pull in the two that are kind of the ones that got this whole thing rolling here. We're going to grab Nick Cohen and John Bors, kind of the ones that spearheaded this one, um, to kind of get things going. And um, it looks like I believe Nick might be actually trying to be an admin and do some race chat stuff with the drivers over there. So, John, you're going to be first up here tonight. So um, getting everything rolling, kind of explaining what we got going on tonight. But um, obviously you and Nick kind of spearheading tonight's events. And uh, maybe if you just kind of want to talk a little bit more about what the drivers and what the fans watching tonight are going to be expect to see for tonight's race. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, first and foremost, it is absolutely amazing how many guys have kind of come out of the woodwork to support this event. Um, it just shows how important Steve was to the sim racing community. Um, as far as racing, it's it's tight. We're about two tenths top to bottom in the field right now. Um, tons of grit, tons of power, and it's hard to pass, but when you make it happen, boy, does it feel great. So I say we, let me pull up the race info actually, because I say we've got heats, we've got um, last chance qualifiers. I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be going on tonight. We've got the heats, the C main, the B main, followed by the feature. Uh, I know there's a little bit of differences over which, um, if you kind of who advances into which one. So um, for, for those that maybe aren't as familiar with heat racing, I mean, what are we looking for um, if you finish in a top? position and qualifying where does that put you in the the heats and then i mean what do you need to do to try to make it to that top 24 for the feature yeah so right now it's looking like we're gonna have probably three to four heats we have a couple stragglers kind of trickling in so iRacing hasn't quite given us the exact number yet but we're looking at about 10 cars per heat um it's gonna be 10 laps top four advanced to the the feature directly um but there is an invert of four so Technically, if you're the fast qualifier, you're starting fourth in your race right on the bubble of making it to the feature. So it's going to be pretty fun. Um, and you got to you gotta push the whole time if you want to make it to the feature directly. If you don't, you end up going to one of the sub mains, whether it's the C or the B. Um, the C main, I believe the top four will advance to the back of the B main, and then the top four will uh, advance to the back of the A main. And uh, C is 15 laps, and B is 30 tonight. So it'll be a ton of racing. And that's that's always what we're here for. Us, I know. I know Josh and Carl hopped on a few laps earlier as well. There, um, I mean, for for you, John. I mean, obviously, 
I say I've done plenty of racing with you. I mean, how do these cars compare to, let's say, the the, the Gen 4 Cup car, probably one of the more popular cars back in iRacing currently. Um, how do these cars compare to that? And, I mean, how, how much fun do you expect to have with these things? Uh, it's it's a total 180 from what you and I usually race on Wednesday night, Gail. Um, instead of praying that you can touch the throttle and it doesn't buzz the tires at the flag stand, this thing has grip for days, man. You can You can stab the gas and pin it to the bottom of the track and get that thing digging so it's going to be all about getting a run off the corner to try to pass a guy i think um but in order to get that run you put yourself in position for someone else to fill the gap on the bottom to take it from you so it's going to be interesting so so john you're talking about how the cars were different i i, I ran a few laps earlier and i think i would have been a lot faster if you could just tell me how do you shift in the third gear because i can never get it to do it you know if if I could find it, I, I would tell you, but I've, I've been looking all night and haven't quite got it. All right. Well, I'm glad everyone's in the same boat. All right, John, I'll let you get back over to your, your group of guys over there. So good luck tonight. Have fun. Definitely hope to see you in that top 24 tonight, man. All right. Thanks, guys. And thanks again for doing the broadcast tonight. Oh, yeah. No worries there. That's our pleasure. All right, so I think we're going to switch from that. So we still got a few minutes left. And uh, so one of the first pe people I, I knew, especially when we were getting the setup that we would want to have a chat with, um, I'll say, I mean, he's been a great friend of mine, my uh, one of basically my, my team leader for a little while as well there. Um, that's Jason Swan, or Swanee, as pretty much everybody Swanee. knows him. Um, i say he's he's the, the main man over Steel Horse Racing. i say Steve was a member of that team, is a member of that team. I was as well for a little while. And... Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what, what team or whatever you're on. Swanee's, Swanee's just a good guy to hang out with and, and be a friend with. And I mean, Swanee, we've, we've been through some, some really, really fun stuff, some really, really tough stuff, of course, recently as well. But, um, I mean, I'm glad to have you here. Definitely sorry that you aren't able to be a part of the race itself, but glad you're here. And again, just, I mean, just that's who you are. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're racing, you're driving, um, if you're just kind of hanging out and BSing. You're always with your with your team, with your drivers, and having a good time. I agree. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having the event. Thanks to everyone who has uh, put a lot of effort into this. Um, this has been very. Uh, it's just been overwhelming. Um, Steve was the the greatest guy you could ever meet. I was just telling someone a second ago. I've known him for ten years and on the uh, computer racing and, and away from computer. I never heard the man ever badmouth anybody. So we um, were, we're just, it's an honor to be a part of such an event. And um, I appreciate everybody showing up and, and just doing everything they have for Steve. And it, he would be very humbled. He was already a humble person anyway, but he would be, just amazed at, at this and i can never thank anyone enough from the bottom of my heart and the team and, and everybody for everything you've done no nah, i mean it's it's yeah and it's that's that's why we have 30 what 32 people looks like at the moment here for those who could make it tonight um i mean before we get to qualifying and say i mean everybody's got their steve stories i say is there any that stand out to you as one that's just one of those ones that you just like you'll never kind of let slip because it's just it's one of those ones that's just a kind of a typical steve thing yes i i would call him on the phone and he would put me on hold for like 10 minutes and i'm like hey man if you needed to go i'd have let you go he said no i'm trying to feed the squirrels out of my hand off my deck and he got finally got it to where he would they would come up and eat out of his uh, hand off the back deck and but he would leave you on hold forever no nah, i mean yeah that, i mean when you, you we know the way he would take care of his cat but i mean that cat was as spoiled as any cat could be so uh, it's no surprise that he'd be doing the same for any other animal he could come across i agree i agree but great guy my heart hurts every day and hopefully we're uh going to be able to help uh, people that need some help or whatever. Sim racing family is the greatest family. I mean, it, it is just truly amazing. I've known people for 25 years on here. I speak to these people more than I do my real friends in real life and um, very humbling. And thank you so much for everything. 
Uh, we're happy to have you, Swanee. And yeah, uh, definitely thank you for being a part of this one tonight. And um, have fun with your guys tonight as they give them, give them crap when you need to and everything. And um, just enjoy the show. And yeah, we'll definitely be giving some updates over the course of, of the race where things are at. So but yeah, thanks again, man. R- appreciate you being here. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, we've just kicked off into qualifying. So it looks like we've got about five minutes for these guys to put down their laps. And I mean, like I said, we talked about the, the heats and the, I said, actually, I'll pull up that graphic once more here. Um, but I mean, we've got the heats, the C main, the B main, then the features. So it's qualifying is going to be important. They got to get it done here in these, these couple laps. Well, and everybody immediately gets themselves out on track. And that's, that's going to be the key is just get out there. In my personal opinion, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to run as many laps as I can to make sure I'm in that rhythm for when my heat comes and hope that I make it into that first heat. But right now, Anthony DeBarro is the purple sector lap, whatever you want to call it. And that is a blistering lap with a 17.27. The next closest is Justin Fuller with a 17.321. Yeah, no doubt. Those are super fast laps. And I, I do find it very interesting, as you pointed out, that the, uh, the people set laps very quickly. I'm used to sitting in leagues where um, it's like, oh, people just kind of waiting around. Some people not qualifying. But it's like everyone's like, hey, we're going to go out there and we're going to set our laps because it's super important um, due to you know the way the heat structure is. Yeah, there was there was no wasting time on this one. Like I said, they went off fast, and I say big big shocker, of course. I say Debar and Fuller being up at the front there so far in the qualifying. Um, but I, I got to give also a shout out to um, Jeff McConey there with McConey Setup Shop, um, donating the setup for tonight. So I say obviously one of the premier setup shops in iRacing. So. Um, he was kind enough to donate the setup for tonight's event, so definitely want to thank him. And um, yeah, so if anybody's looking for for setups for iRacing for those open open leagues, open series, uh, you can check them out over at McConey Setup Shop. So again, really want to thank him for his donation um, for the setup, as well of course donation towards the Limelight Foundation as well. Really, really nice of him to to be able to do that. Um, and I think we still have a few minutes left here in qualifying. I don't know if you guys can verify that for me or not. Yeah, we, we still got, have two uh, and a half minutes. Yep. So I think we'll pull in. Let's kind of, uh, we're going to do a quick little video here about Steve. He kind of just tells you a little bit about kind of his, his background. So we'll get that going here real quick before we get qualifying finished up here. I got an engineering degree. I spent a few years doing that. And um, then I moved over into software marketing and and software development and started my own consulting business, Uh, had clients all over the New York area and loved what I did was automating businesses. And this is really like back when Windows was just becoming a thing. So it was uh, a lot more of a challenge then than it is today when you can pretty much design things visually. Um, I had to do almost everything by code All right, so we're going to pull in Nick Cohen. We talked to John a moment ago, but Nick, also you were instrumental in getting this one set up tonight. So um, obviously you, you love setting up the, all these heat races between the, the dirt racing, the oval racing that on Tuesday and Wednesday nights with your league. Um, but, I mean, tell us about the event tonight. I mean, what's what are you looking forward to? I mean, what's what's the pressure look like to, compared to maybe your typical league race here with these m- modifieds at North Wilkesboro? Um, yeah, it's a, quite a different night. Um you know, excited to be here, but you know, would would like for Steve to be out here on the uh, pixel racing surfaces with us. But um, I do know that Steve would be really proud and really happy of everything that we put together. I I, I know he'd he'd be very happy. Um, but yeah, as far as the race goes, it's um, this is great. I, I mean, it's cool to see a bunch of different drivers from many different uh, many different leagues that that Steve raced in, um, you know, it's, it's quite the mix of people and, uh, you know, we got a great amount of donations and, and everybody seems very happy to be here for a great cause. And, uh, 
you know, it's it's going to be fun. These cars are pretty hooked up, but it's going to be, uh, hopefully it puts on a good race for you guys. All right, speaking of that, looks like we're about to get right to because cars are starting to grid for heat number one. So, Nick, we'll let you go get ready and, and put on your admin hat. So, good luck over there and have some fun tonight, man. All right, thanks, Kyle. All right, so we're getting going here. Um, can we, are we able to put a starting grid for this one? We sure are. All right, starting in first for this heat, we've got Casey Miller followed by Garrett Boyd. Chris Rebell in third, and Anthony DeBarro in fourth. Norm Pelletier in fifth, and in sixth, um, that is D.L. Lemon. In seventh, we have Chris Gabot, and in eighth, Paul Nelson. Ninth is Rick Kohler, and in tenth, Ross Gage. And we're going to ignore eleventh, because he shouldn't be there. He should not be in a car on this track at all, no. <laughs> um... Some really good lap times in qualifying, though. I'm uh, excited to see what these guys do here over this 10-lap uh, heat. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the thing. is it's I mean, it's 10 laps, but I mean, it's those 10 laps are going to go pretty quick. So, um, and like you mentioned, I mean, that, that invert you got to borrow there, he was the quickest in qualifying, but now he restarts, or he starts, I should say, outside of row number four. And I believe caution laps do not count, if I understood correctly. Um, I'm not sure if the heats have yellows or not. So that's always the thing with with um, these heat races, and then the, all the all the other parts that go with them. I'm a little bit still learning on that one, so um, it'll be fun to see kind of yeah if there are yellows in this one, or it might be the next two after that, the B main and, and such. So we'll we'll see if the yellows do come out or not. But the fun part too is gonna be looking at some of these beautiful paint schemes we got it tonight. Yeah, no doubt. Some really nice schemes, but I, you know, what I'm what I'm looking at here, you know, uh, with the laps I ran on track, um, first few laps it's gonna feel, or I should say more accurately, it's gonna sound loose. The the, the your tires gonna be squealing, but it has so much grip, and if you trust your grip, you'll be fine. Um, it gets tight after about ten laps. You're not taking care of your tires, but hey, they uh, they have all the they they got ten laps here to just to run and and push it as hard as they want. So I think we're gonna see some really great racing here. Well, and we also have 10 people out there right now. Four cars are going to make it. It's a very difficult track to pass, but at the end of the day, it's possible. And we've only got 10 laps to figure it out. So, yeah, th yeah we're, we're getting, getting ready to go here. Uh, the lights on the pace car are off, so we'll have one more pace lap here. Um... You know, if, if, if you're someone, uh, how many do we have advancing? It's uh, four? Four in this one advanced to the feature. Okay, uh, str straight to the feature. And then, of course, everyone else will have the opportunity in the uh, the, the heat, the other heat races, right? Yeah, exactly yes. right. Yep. Two, yep. Uh, right. two more opportunities, yep. So, so I guess, you know, what's your strategy here? Are, are, are you going for it now? Or are you, uh, if you're someone sitting like in seventh or eighth? I think if I'm kind of towards the back half of the pack here, I might just try to take it a little easy, see if any chaos happens, and then go from there. But I think if you're in this top two, top three rows, you got to go, and that's what those top five have done right off the bat here. Yeah, and they did not hesitate they, at all. And we have our first person around, and we do have cautions. Oh, you it, have DL Lemon around there. Yeah, DL there Lemon must... looks to be the person that goes around, and yeah, you guys said it. It very much is going to be aggression early. So let's take another look here. This is right off the kick here, too. So I'll pick it up and say, yeah, just almost like you didn't grab the gear. I think he may have found that third gear you had been looking for there, Carl. Yeah, man, if I had had it on a, a you know, after I got up the speed, it would have been perfect. Well, and the other problem that we're gonna, these guys are going to run into is we've got marbles out there, but that's contact. And yeah, not much you can do on that one. That's definitely not a marble issue there. That's the the 55 there. Unfortunately, looks like Rick Kohler. But that's a pretty square hit though for that 08. I don't think he's gonna be too hurt on that one. So. No, that that looks clean. Well, to make things better, these cars are tanks. These are not made for the top echelons of racing. They're meant for your weekend warriors. So these steel tube frames meant to take a beating these the suspension same thing so he shouldn't be that damaged 
He is going to unfortunately get shuffled to the back of the field. But we should be able to get ourselves racing. These laps aren't going to count, so... We still, we still got have all, quite a few. Yeah, we still got all to do. And that's that's really the other big thing with caution laps not counting is you have to make that pass, but then cross the start finish line as well. So you pass somebody entering turn two or entering turn one out of turn two. Yellow comes out. Guess what? They get that spot right back. So if you're trying to make some passes, you're thinking, man, I got to use that start finish line for this pass to count because otherwise it kind of stings when you think you have it done and it doesn't quite pan out that way. No, yeah. the, la the rules that we have here with iRacing aren't quite the same as what you'd see at your local track to where there's timing loops and different lines that you can hit. iRacing sometimes does not seem to have logic. There is logic, as our programmer Carl can <laughs> tell us. It just doesn't I make I sense. I, I was going to say, I can't explain iRacing's logic sometimes, but, um, you know, it's it's it's... It has its own sort of uh, uh, charm to it sometimes, and obviously we we understand what's happening here because we've encountered it a few times ourselves. <laughs> yeah, and I was saying, talking about the technical difficulty side of things too, for whatever reason, it still thinks I'm on replay, even though I'm pretty sure I'm set to live here. So we're gonna. You definitely are. Uh, make make sure you're uh, going the correct speed because I had that happen the other day. Everything looks happy. We're gonna do a quick little adjustment here. And then and go live. Yeah. Well, oh, oh man. Well, that's how it goes sometimes. What we'll do is, I'll say we'll leave it here for the moment. I say we are live, but it's unfortunately we'll have the ticker for the moment. But we say, don't need a ticker like, because we've got Carl and Josh. Well, and we also have the pace car making its way in. These guys are lined up single file, and going green, crossing the line to start the second lap, and we already see some fanning out in the back here we see a little bit of a touch oh going around oh, going around going around and oh that's happening behind the pack so that is not going to bring out the yellow quite yet until our leaders get themselves around to that point but we are going to be starting lap three these guys are they going to get themselves turned around yes they are moving so we are going to keep ourselves going green and that's just unfortunate that's not what we want to see in this situation because that's a smoking car yeah, that, that, I don't think that car would be allowed in most bars and restaurants. It was um, very much uh, smoking, <laughs> uh, looking rough. Um, but uh, happy to see we were able to stay green, although it, you know, it was very unfortunate for Ross Gage there. Yeah, no, so it's like Ross and DLM, I think, are two, though, unfortunately, that got hit really hard on the Rick Kohler as well in that 55 so far. But these guys still have the opportunity to get themselves back into it to where... There's last chance qualifying, but right now it looks like we have a little bit of a breakaway pack as they're starting the sixth lap, and the guys in fifth there, they've got to make up some ground. Yeah, if they, if they you know, uh, uh, Chris Cabo in fifth there, uh, obviously, uh, I'm assuming there's not actually the caution out. I think your overlay is messed up, correct? Um, yeah, no, our overlay is <laughs> um, we'll, we'll reset that. Don't worry. Yeah, got, got thrown off there. But yeah, uh, obviously, if you want to guarantee an advancement to the uh, feature, you want that top four spot. But uh, Chris Cabo, quite a bit of a gap back there. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that'll be a little tricky for him at this point. Well, as we're on lap eight and these front four are just going to keep moving forward. And if they're smart, just go ahead. Accept the fact that you're going to move on to the feature. Yeah, you could probably get yourself into a better seat, but you're going to be starting somewhere in the top 12. And yeah, there's yeah, an invert. Yeah, you know, I... I, I, I I think I would agree with you. I think I just want to guarantee that I advance, but these guys still look like they're uh, pretty racy out there. Um, uh, definitely right on each other's bumpers, trying to make some uh, uh, movement. Well, and it's mostly at the tail end of that, looking for that slightly better position, but as we cross, come out of turn four, cross the line, we have ourselves a race. Yeah, so on that one, top four, give me Casey Miller, Garrett Boyd, uh, Chris Rabel and Anthony DeBar will be the top four advancing there. Um, and I'm going to try to see if we can get my overlays to cooperate for this next race here. 
yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you already restarted uh, live timing and um, yeah, I, I ran into that a few times last week, um, but uh, it was because it was for some reason not showing as being uh, normal speed, so I'm not sure what happened there. Well, but we have ourselves ready to go here, and it's looking oh, like we're moving. With... Yeah. yeah. So let, let me let me run no through the lineup break. on this one. Um, in first, Dan Walker, and in second, Ryan Seneker. Third is Justin Fuller. Uh, actually, it might be Nick Cohen. I can't tell. They're moving around. Um, uh, f uh, sorry, fourth, Nick Cohen. Fifth, Stephen Taylor, and in sixth, Mike Grandy. Seventh and eighth are the Kevins, Kevin Schmidt and Kevin Haas. Uh, ninth, John Borst, uh, or Ed Springer, and tenth, uh, John Borst. Sorry, they're all shuffling around as they're uh, lining up. Uh, that's how it always goes. And we also have the invert, because Dan Walker should have been the pole setter here. But we're inverting the top four to give these guys a little bit of a chance. And um, that did, that, did the invert not already happen? No, it already happened. But yeah, yeah so I Dan, think Dan, Dan, Fuller. Dan I think Walker. was yeah. I think Fuller was quickest yeah. of qualifying. Yeah. But, right. Okay. I misunderstood you. Fuller was the fastest. I thought you were saying Dan Walker was the fastest. Um, no, no, Dan yes, Walker so. is was, in the front. Yes, he is correct. Um, sorry, I misunderstood you. I was so distracted by the, everything jumping around. Now I got as other things popping up here. What is going? Shannon on? Shenandoah shine. <laughs> My SDK is just going off the wall here, boys. But. We can go ahead and give you guys a little bit of commentary. The green flag is flying. And these guys are keeping a little bit tidier through the first few corners, but we do have a little bit of side-by-side -side action. The battle for third, well, for second, is three cars deep. As yeah, right they, those, guys, those guys need to be careful because I'll tell you what, it looked like for a little bit like we were going to have a four-car breakaway again like that first heat. But uh, we looked there as uh, Steven Taylor coming into the picture as those guys were side by side, neither of them being able to run their preferred line. And Steven Taylor going to try to get up in there and uh, make himself a uh, part of this. Well, and that's what he should be doing right now. But right now, Nick and Ryan, they are doing everything they can to create a just wall to make sure that no one can get into this fight. But now, second through sixth, all together, ready to fight it out. Yeah, you know who's loving this right now is Dan Walker. He is up there by himself in clean air, having no issues, as uh, we see uh, Seneca and uh, Fuller with that wall still. Uh, Steven Taylor, Mike Grandy there, looking to try to find a gap to get in there. Yeah, but it, we've finally got ourselves to the conga line that you kind of expect here at North Wilkesboro. But there is starting to get a battle to where Nick Cohan, he is on that bumper of Dan Walker looking to make a move he wants that outside spot going into the feature race oh, oh as we have a touch to where that is justin fuller around he manages to hang on to it enough to keep the caution from flying but that creates our two car breakaway now yeah Ju justin fuller though lost a lot of positions there down five spots um as nick cohen steven taylor mike grandy there to take advantage and there is the fat, the second fastest man in qualifying looking to have only an outside chance of just getting straight into the feature. As we start lap eight, we have two cars that have taken advantage of that little bit of contact. But then right behind them, we have Steven Taylor, Mike Grandy Sr., and Kevin Schmidt is just barely outside that hunt. And it looks like... These, this pair at the front, they're wanting to put on a show. Yeah, you're talking Schmidt back there, but don't forget about uh, Kevin Haas back there as well, uh, running in sixth, uh, uh, having a uh, up two spots, having a respectable run so far in this uh, heat. Um, and John Borst uh, uh, up two spots as well. But as we start the final lap of this heat, it looks like we're having that battle towards the back and just doing everything we can but these guys are side by side coming to the line out of turn four who's going to be able to get it and i can't make a call off of that it I... looks like it was dan walker yeah i was, Those it was super close i'm here. still i'm still battling my my overlays here i apologize again guys i don't know what what's going on with i'm trying to get to come back Oh, 
as far. we get ourselves into this, I can run us through our grid for heat number three. Starting at the front, he would have been qualified fourth as Jeff McConey. Then we have Ross Cato, followed by Ryan Munez. I and think I, I think you get that wrong. Did I? Well, unless hold on. Yeah, it's showing Chad or uh, Ryan. Or no, uh, I'm Chad going yeah. through the. I'm doing it backwards. Ah. <laughs> uh, Pete's inverted fields, and I can't pull up things because Gael's having issues. All right. Anyway, Chad Cole is our pull, the person on poll right now. Ryan Munez is second, followed by Ross Cato in third, Jeff McConey in fourth, fifth is Justin Rector, sixth, Joe Dinsmore, seventh is Jeff Sharp. Eighth is Johnny Downey. Ninth is Don Runkle Jr. And tenth is Jared McCall. They were much more well-behaved for you and not moving around. I was watching it. <laughs> I was looking at a completely different location. Uh, um, well, hey, I, I think um, uh, I, I'm feeling good about this heat. There's a lot of I, I don't know who the favorite is here, to be honest, but I'm looking at Joe Dinsmore sitting there in sixth, and I don't think he's going to stay in sixth for long. No, he, he is not. But we are off and racing. And Chad Cole gets an amazing jump to the front of this field. But these guys are a little more bunched up. And Jeff McConey gets a great run on Ryan Munez as he has a little bit of a bobble out of turn two where we've reached our conga line in the front five. But Jeff McConey with an amazing move down the inside into turn one. Yep, McConey uh, trying to take over the lead here. Um, will be up three spots if he can do it. Um, easily the, the biggest uh, uh, move we've seen um, uh, from anyone tonight. No, that was... That was quite the move. Because, again, you've, you basically have to just send it with no hesitation here if you're going to make that kind of a move. But we do have a little bit of side-by-side -side action going on in the back to where Jeff Sharp and Don Runkle Jr. They are still side-by-side. -side. We are on lap four, coming to five. And you know what? These guys are just out here to have fun. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, um, you know, obviously they're not really in contention for one of the top four spots right now. But, uh, hey, you can still go out there and race, and it'll affect your uh, starting position for uh, uh, for those following heats. Well, that's exactly what we're looking for is these guys, you know what, had a little bit of a bad start, ended up falling back a little bit. But as we look, this front five, well, six seven-ish they are getting bunched up to where they're running out of time and there's too big a gap between some of these cars to where we're looking at a quarter of a second half a second right yeah, now yeah th th this top six right now they're all well behaved um and i say that and uh we've got um who is that is that uh rector there yeah rector trying to get uh to uh kato um but they're all well behaved well, and the thing is, is he's looking like he may give somebody a little bit of a tip there because he is just right there on, I mean, it's technically a bumper, but it's just a bunch of pipe. Well, that's for the all-important fourth spot. Um, it so is. Rector's trying to do what he can, uh, definitely driving it in really hard. Well, and the big thing is, is those front two, they are off as we start the final lap of this heat race. And we're seeing some side-by-side -side action to where Ross Cato, looking on that outside line, manages to get the pass done on Ryan Muniz, and that is opening up the door for Justin Rector, and he's not going to be able to get the job done. But Jeff McConey, after that brilliant turn one move, brings home the win in Heat 3. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to call out, because I know Joe Dinsmore likes to watch, uh, as we see Shannon do a shine again. Um, I know Joe Dinsmore likes to watch these races uh, the next day. Uh, so I got to say, what the crap, man? I talked you up and uh, <laughs> expected you to move up some spots, not finish sixth. 
I mean, if they could have heard the pre-race conversations, I'm used to seeing Joe just excel at these kinds of tracks, but we still well, have a few different races before we get to the point where we can say... Yeah, I think we've we've. Uh, this is our uh, first uh, follow up, Peter, our first main, right? Um, this is yeah. this is yep. the so B let's... main, which is the only thing, the only one we have, or the oh, C okay. main. Right, no, this is run. a C main. Fifteen laps, and we are inverting the top four once again. All right. Well, let me run through our uh, field. Starting uh, from the front will be Don Runkle Jr., followed by John Borst, Rick Kohler in third, and Jeff Sharp in fourth. Fifth is Ross Gage and sixth, Ed Springer. Seventh, Johnny Downey. Eighth, Dio Lemon. Ninth is Ryan Seneker. And tenth, Jared McCaud. Um, got those uh, AOL guys right there together. Um, uh, uh, and actually, Rick, Rick Kohler, uh, I don't think he races AOL anymore, but he used to be over there. And uh, all of them bunched up together. It would be like calling a race uh, from the old days for us. I know. Back in the AOL Cup broadcast days. But these guys are ready to get themselves moving, and I'm already, I'm excited to see what this group has for us. Because again, we've got ourselves 10 cars. Four are gonna make it through to the next B main, where they're gonna have 30 laps of opportunity to make it. And 12 will make it through, because we ended up having fewer heat races so we're going to have a reasonable number of people just making it through, no questions asked. Yeah, yeah I mean, this sure. will be another, another top four one. So, but I mean, I'm looking at the, I mean, you look at the top four right now. I mean, you, they're probably pretty happy with, with their positions, right? I mean, you think about the 55 or Kohler, he had that bad look right off the bat for his race, so he's in a good position here, so we'll see what happens. But the green flag is out, and these guys are off, and the front row gets an amazing start, and that outside line is going to have a great opportunity to carry a lot of speed. So it looks like John Borst, oh, they're going to go wheel to wheel, and four wheels, are, or eight wheels are better than four. Yeah, you know, sometimes, um, but they're, they're playing with fire right now. Um... But it looks like uh, John Borst might be able to get this position if he can just uh, make it stick on the exit here. But no, <laughs> still still not quite able to clear um, Don Runkle Jr. there. And I've spent a lot of time on track with Don Runkle. He is, he's aggressive. He's clean. But he's also a lot of fun to be in the chat with. Well, hey, I just want to talk about uh, Johnny Downey just set the uh, fastest lap of this heat um, and is in fifth now, up two spots. Um, so he's 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 trying his hardest to get his, race his way in here. Him and that Tide car doing everything possible. That two-by-two two action at the front of this race is going to be to his advantage because the two cars in front of him are not going to be able to really pull away and defend too much and it looks like he's getting himself a great run around the outside going into turn one and that could be the move yeah no i was i was starting to think he was gonna wreck ross there but uh he said no i'll just go around on the outside uh made it look easy that time as johnny downey currently sitting in that all-important fourth spot and the big problem is is again i brought it up in the first one as that is a send around the wow. outside <laughs> that is getting the job done to where Nick Cohan, he, oh, maybe he picked up a few too many marbles, but he's trying to cross over. It looks like he may have the opportunity to get himself in there, but not quite. And he's going to have to sit there and run in six. And oh, that is some, whoo. That'll bring out the caution, I'd imagine. Yes, it did. Yeah, caution yes, is did. out. I'll say this is all oh. I, f I, I get scared here. This is where everything started breaking before. But let's go back and see if we can take a look if it lets me. Yeah, just drifts up. Wasn't quite up to the wall on the outside there where you would expect someone to be. But to be completely honest, no one on that outside has been going up all the way to the wall because you don't got to let them. It's just... I'll be honest, if it was Carl on my inside, I'm not giving him the wall. I mean, 
You never know. But right now, we have seven laps in the books. We're only halfway through this. Yeah, I'd say pretty much right at the halfway point on this one. So um, it's really only, this has been what now, the second yellow since the, the initial start on the first uh, heat there. So um, been going pretty lean and green since then. I think I think the kind of knowing that, hey, I got to get into the, one of these top fours, I think aggression starting to ramp up a little bit possibly on these things. And, you know, it, it's what's going to end up happening more often than not. Unfortunately, DL Lemon, that, that was just the worst. He had a rough time in his heat. Has another rough time here. And it's just unfortunate to see, but you know what? We've all had those kinds of races. Some of us more than others. Gonna, yeah, some of us have our teammates ram into us under caution. I'm nervous, but I'm going to press a button. Let's see if anything happens. Uh, survey says no, nothing happens. Uh, hang, hang on just a second. <laughs> still trying to get some overlays working, everybody. Again, I apologize for that. I I don't know why everything was working great, and then everything started breaking. And yeah, I don't know if it's a server issue or what, but we're, we're still going after it here, I promise. I think we'll be fine. Right now, we'll do our best to keep everyone abreast of what's going on on track. We still have one more lap worth of caution. It's also entirely possible that once we get past um, uh, the heat and we get into the feature, it might work correctly. I've seen some weird stuff with that. Yeah, maybe iRacing doesn't like heat racing. No, iRacing hates heat racing. <laughs> But we are going to go ahead, and apparently this one is double file for the restart. Must have just been since the last caution that we had, which was the first heat. It went, uh, since it was on the first lap, it went single file. But lights on the pace car are off, and time for us to go have John Boris lead us back to racing, and he is off early and that's what he needed. He couldn't quite get clear of Don Runkle before. Now he just does it by controlling the start. Yeah, he, he made that look easy right there. Um, as we see, uh, once again, Johnny Downey up there trying to make that outside work. But uh, uh, going to have some trouble there with uh, Jeff Sharp on his inside. But I, I say that, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no problem at all. It's Johnny Downey uh, up to third. Well, now we roll back and Jeff Sharp in the 10 car. They are going to go ahead and start battling just a little bit, but it looks like Jeff Sharp's going to be able to clear all the way up at this point as we see a little bit of contact towards the back of the field, and that is going to sh shuffle Ryan Seneca to the back. But now we've got our car conga line going as we start lap 11. That leaves these guys five laps to go to get themselves into a position and into that B main. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking at guys. Uh, John Boris just set the uh, fastest lap of uh, this heat. Um, he's, he, and, I, and I say that, Jeff Sharp just I'll set say a fast one. Yeah, he just Sharp bested him. Purple. By quite a bit, actually. Uh, uh, Jeff Sharp looking uh, really racy right now. You might say he's looking sharp. Oh. <laughs> I had to. I had to. Oh, really? we got trouble in the back, though. Oh, yeah. Hey. Like, uh, DLM and Ryan Seneca. We are Pull still that. green, though. Or no, caution's out. No, I'm sorry. Caution oh, is yeah. out. I'm going to focus on yeah. Seneca here. Oh, Ooh. it looks like just gets loose. And, oh, the tank slapper and everybody trying to avoid it. And I'll say it's one of those things I think it took that, that half a lap kind of a wreck to happen. Not exactly sure. Mm, that thing looks good still. Okay, so this is actually a little too early, it appears.
No, still good close racing, so yeah. We're just, 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 just having racing. a bad time. It's a lot to do occasionally. That'll do it though, right there. Uh, yeah, that's what we're yeah. looking at. Oh, nice. Shenandoah. I don't know where Shenandoah. I literally, I'm looking through all my my layouts, and that is nowhere in any of my scenes and sources. Oh man, it's not one thing; it's another. For what it's worth, mine's actually having some issues as well. I'm not sure what's going on, so uh, maybe it's an issue with the overlay software. You know, and that that itself is something that I'm in no way surprised by. Yeah, they've unfortunately I've seen it from time to time those those issues, and yeah, I say, well, I'll try to switch. I know there's like a, a A server and a B server, and yeah, we'll see if I can get. Yeah, some... and I. I I also sent you mine if you want to try it, and I can just run the overlay, but uh, we'll we'll figure that out. Let's give it a try. Local version, or are you using the online version? Online version. I just updated to a different room name. Oh, no. I was more speaking with Gael to where oh. I always had major issues if I was using online. And then I would switch between the online and the local version. And that would work for me some for some reason within SDK or within uh, OBS. OBS. Yeah, I always had issues with the uh, uh, or the uh, local one. So, unfortunately, everybody's getting to listen to us talk about how the sausage is made with these broadcasts. <laughs> it's a lot to it. You'd be surprised. And, and how many laps are we going to have to go when we when we go back green here? We are only going to have two laps. We are going to oh, come man. back on lap 14. So we're essentially running green, white, checkered conditions right here. I'm, I'm looking at guys As like Jeff McCaw and Ross Gage. The, the pace car is off, and John Boris gets a good jump, but not quite as good as he did prior. But we're seeing guys throwing it down, and that's going to force cars wide, and I can't quite tell who that is. But Johnny Downey doing an amazing job protecting, and I'm amazed he hasn't gone. Or and there, oh, wait, he here it is. is. Oh, that oh. was a great defense. But Oof. there's only so much you can do when there's a car right there. Yeah, there's there some big aggressive moves being made there to try to grab that spot, and unfortunately, did not pan out for either of them. I uh, say so this one was kind of going for a little bit too. Um, you saw Downey. I mean, he was doing what he needed to do. He was on the inside line. I mean, you can see how low that 10 is. Almost actually looks like I think actually what got him into was touching that curb there. And then at that point, he's just trying to catch that car. And then the 10, it's one of those things that just, yeah, there's there's not much that's going to happen that is going to go well. But what, what hurts the 10 is right there. It gets caught into the back there by the 28, I think that is of Ed Springer. Um, but I believe this is going to be a huge break, though, if I'm not mistaken, possibly for Ross Gage. We'll just we'll well, see at the timing of the yellow. Something. We'll see. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you what. I was watching Ross Gage on that restart, and he was up against the wall, gained a spot doing it. It was kind of wild. And I've raced with Ross. He has been racing for quite some time. He knows what he needs to do. Without a doubt. Um... Uh, really, really good. Uh, uh, and, and I think, are cautions counting for this one or not? No, I don't believe so. I huh. don't believe they count until we get ourselves to the feature. Okay, because it, 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 there's definitely something really going on with our overlay because it just came through and said white flag when they call across under caution. <laughs> well, it, it no, that is actually to be expected because it doesn't catch the fact that it's not changing laps until after sometimes I so gotcha. since we are coming to the white flag when we restart this sdk is just having its own yeah and you know and i i, Gael, I actually just realized i didn't have it uh correctly broadcasting uh so i don't know if you actually tried changing it earlier but if you want to try it again it may work 
Yeah, so I'm going to mess around with it too. I'm also trying to figure out the replay logos, why that's having a <laughs> yeah. thing. It's, it's just been a thing for us today. It has. And when in doubt, it's when we have a bunch of people out there watching. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's just the way these things go. However, We've got a pretty much a one lap shootout here, if I'm not mistaken. We do, and these guys are going to be lined up single file, so that's going to make it that much more interesting. But the lights on the pace car being off means it's time to get ourselves to racing. And I'll, I'll tell you what: what single file actually to me is more dangerous in this case than double file. Because I think you're going to see some people try to dive bomb here, and make it happen. And the green flag is going, and we're seeing. Just a little bit of that, and Ross Gage gets an amazing jump, but he does the right thing, goes ahead, backs it off, because he's got quite a bit of space back there to fifth. And these guys, it's lap 15, it's the last lap, and these front four, led by John Boris, they're going to go ahead and get themselves into the B main, to where they've got 30 laps to decide their future. Yeah, that was good stuff right there. Um... All right, so which heat are we on now? I've lost track. We are on B main. We are on the last of the uh, qualifiers. All right, well, I'll go run through the starting grid real quick. Uh, starting up front will be Paul Nelson, followed by Justin Rector. In third, it's Kevin Schmidt. And in fourth, Chris Gabo. Fifth is Kevin Haas. And sixth is Joe Densmore. Seventh is Norm Pelletier. And in eighth, Justin Fuller. Ninth, John Borst. And in tenth, Don Ruckel Jr. 11th, Jeff Sharp, and in 12th, Ross Gage. And I believe this is the last heat. I believe, I, if I read correctly, I think, uh, from what I understand, everyone from this is advancing. If we have 12 people in this, then yes, that is the situation. So yes, everyone will be making it. So this is essentially a race for your grid position. Yeah, at that point, I, I'm curious to see if people are just going to go for it. <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, you, you know you're advancing, so uh, see if you can gain any spots. Uh, I think that is the best plan to where these guys, everybody out there watching is going to get 30 laps of great racing. Again, this field, just because the transfers from the heats was so small, we still have, not that everyone out there that has participated tonight isn't a great racer except for the guy who didn't start uh that carl's guy hmm. but we have a lot of people that i have called races for in right now on track that i normally wouldn't expect to be in a last chance qualifier yeah for sure um uh but pace car is off, and we're going racing. As let's see how much chaos there is going into turn one, and these guys are all over the place to where our front two there are going to go ahead and get themselves up there in single file. Joe Densmore going to make his way into fourth, but he's going to have a little bit of a push on that inside. But Don Runkle Jr. makes his way in, and he is working that outside line and trying to get himself up there may have just tagged the wall a little bit but he's hey, trying happens. to get himself a little bit further forward Ooh. than eight yes. hey look uh uh norm pelletier just ran uh the fastest lap of the race with a 17 4 4 um but i'm taking a look right here at justin fuller he is up three spots running in fifth right now um looking uh really fast right now and again, we've got 30 laps. This is the longest that anyone has had to run so far. 15 laps is nothing more than a sprint in these cars. We're actually kind of starting to push where the fuel mileage is in these cars. We're seeing, we're saying it's going to be about 50 laps to where the feature is going to be 91. Yeah. I'm and, curious and I, I, where the tires are going to be. 
I was going to say that 100%. I think the uh, the tire wear is going to be uh, uh, something to watch here, without a doubt. Um, uh, because it, it'll start tightening up quite a bit after around 15 laps or so. And it looks like Gael may have figured something out. As something we're about to there. cross the line to start... 24 laps to go. That is accurate. It's for my happening. Math. Look at that. Is that mine or is that yours, Kyle? This Gael? is still mine. I think whatever Perfect. was broken is, is back in business. So, again, sincerest apologies. But I, I was quiet because I was working hard in the background there. And so, I mean, we wanted to be working right for the big show. And all fingers, toes, whatever else you got crossed, I'd say maybe we have something here. But... Man, you guys were lying about Fuller, though. He's up to third now. He's he's on a tear. Oh, yeah. Yes. He is not wasting any time to where he's he's run a the last lap, not what he just finished. But it was a 17-3-2-8. That's closing in on the top five in qualifying in the race. Yeah, I, I have to wonder if he's wearing his stuff out a little bit. But I am taking a look here at seven lap averages. Um, and right now, your, your top four seven-lap averages are top four on the track. Uh, as we oh. see, oh, uh, someone off track there a little bit, but yeah, we're, uh, we're Justin keeping it I think, I think maybe a little bit of contact there slowed them both up a little bit. That's brought Norm right back into the mix here in that 56. Well, and, and that's, that's going to open up the door for Joe Densmore to start tracking down the 25 car. But, man, it's a hornet's nest from third on back. Oh, big contact. Oh. And that's going to be a caution as they hit that inside wall. He and just, that was Johnny, uh, or no, that was the 56. Justin Rector, Norm Pelletier, yeah. It just, it just had that feeling. Like, it just was ramping up too much. And, yeah, it just it felt like a matter of time, unfortunately, on that one. Are, are, are you brave enough to try a replay, guy? Oh, man, I am nervous, but let's do this. I said, don't want to find out. Oh, that was perfect. Just, yeah. just looks like he got a little tight there. Yeah, Maybe the brought it a little too hot. It up and there wasn't quite the space. And again, these guys just... I mean, they get to go to the feature and it's not like they have to have their crew fix the car in between. So, meh, why not? I, I, I You know, if I've, I'm still hanging around though, so might as well uh, go in there and get your repairs. Um, and also, whatever's happening over there on your um, uh, yeah, timing and scoring gets a little little goofy during pit stops. Yeah, yep, yep. That I'm wondering if it's because the caution laps don't count. I, th I think exact that's exactly thing. it. It gets real crazy when <laughs> they don't. And count. I gotta, I yeah. gotta, I gotta show off though. I, or not, I should say shit. I gotta brag. Though. Does this not give Derek Cope vibes to you guys? That that kind of that magenta, the little checkered flag in the white. Like it just that's the pure later scheme to me. Which one are we looking at? The, the 16 um, of Paul Nelson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like that, that car just screams pure later to me. It's good, it's good looking scheme. Um, I mean, it's, it's probably not any better than a double zero that I may have painted myself. Excuse me. Um, but not. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing quite like showing off your own skills. Yeah. There. Although, if, yeah. We're, if we're going to go for full, full Steve Retro, though. John Boris has it with the all black with the the bright colors. Um, you got the yellow, the cyan, the magenta, the magenta roll bars on it. Like that, this was the epitome of of a Steve paint scheme. Um, which actually, I don't. We'll see if we get the one to go here. So I say that's gonna be one thing we have to talk about too. We'll we'll pull that one up here shortly next. But because um, he wasn't Steve to us, he was Nerf, and. We'll have to kind of talk about. We'll have to, I have a video clip from the from the podcast from Ghostfire Media that he did a while back, and um, he kind of talks about where Nerf came from. And so we definitely have to bring that up as well. So, however, he's got one of his good friends there. Actually, two of his good friends. I should say in the front row there, but his uh, Steel Horse teammate AOLL um, competitor there, Joe Dinsmore here outside front row. So let's see if Joe can make something happen with Chris here. And when the pace car peels off, that outside row is where you want to be, unless you can control the start to where Chris that was a brilliant jump to get himself up there but Joe may be able to carry a little bit of speed through the corner but that is definitely not going to happen to where Justin Fuller gonna get that second position 
Yeah, look, these looking guys at, are going to be a little more calm. Yeah, looking at Joe there on that restart, it almost looked like he may have uh, thought it was going to start a little bit earlier and got a little bit of a jump and then had to back off, and that's what may have cost him a little bit of time there. I it's like no. these guys aren't going as crazy other than Don in that he's just looking to wreck that paint job that he gave you gave him. <laughs> just trade a little bit of that paint with somebody else. Oh man, there's a, you got the as he's all black leaving car. it on the wall. Uh oh, so you got the all black car versus the all white car here. Say so just the in numbers fl flipped here, but I uh, say I this kind of has that feel of Fuller just isn't gonna be beat in this in this heat here. Um, although Chris is definitely trying to make it as difficult as he possibly can. Yeah, that last lap Fuller was two tenths faster. Um, he is he is on a roll right now, up seven spots. Um, I, I gotta agree with you. It's starting to feel like this is his race to lose. He is he is super fast. We'll have to see if his uh, tires are gonna hold up. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is like I said, we just crossed the halfway point, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, but like I said though, as we gotta go back a little bit because these guys, this is where it's been getting busy and. I uh, say a big surprise to see Norm right back into the thick of it. And I say a little surprise to see that 86 of John Boris kind of just cruising because we saw him up front. He was making hay. It seems like he's just kind of taking it easy, which I don't know. I figured, like I said, this would be one where it's like, hey, let me get what I can get now. Yeah, it could just, you know, be trying to, uh, you know, take it easy and not, uh, you know, you don't want to make enemies uh, for, for the main race either. Yeah, also talking point. about a 100 degree track temperature right now to where it's not the hottest that it could possibly be so 20 laps in these guys the tires aren't going to be terrible we had a caution thrown in there but who's to say the last two laps these extra wide tires on the modifieds aren't going to be screaming oh just saw one catch, catch the wall there I would think it was Norm yeah. And oh. caution now is I guess he got a little bit of a Ooh, that was about perfect there, a little kick around there. I had yeah. to say something about the caution. I sure did. So we'll jump back here and take another look here. And I think this one for Norm was just a little too much. There he is. Oh yeah, just cause then these things just again, I don't know these cars very well, but it seems like even with those roll bars on the side, you can just catch the wall. And it, it just grabs you. Oh, the 0-3 yeah, oh. there. And they're yeah. also wedges. To where rear ends get lifted up a lot like that. But I think it's mostly just it tightens up over a run. We haven't had anything longer than 15 laps and for the most part 10 laps. Yeah, that's that's the most dangerous thing about these uh, heats is that you, you get used to running it a certain way. You take a long break in between, and then all of a sudden you're out here having to run a longer race. Um, yeah, that, that that was a tough break. I felt like uh, he, uh, he he kind of followed uh, the car in front of him a little bit into that wall. The car in front of him backed off, and uh, he he slammed into it, and that's just how it goes sometimes. And again, we you need to practice the long runs and understand how this car is going to behave and again the one thing i'm looking forward to is seeing if we have an early caution in the feature these guys can fill it up to run the entire race distance but who actually knows how this car performs with a full gas tank <laughs> yeah and you know I, honestly i think there's some guys out there who might prefer it uh with a full gas tank versus uh, uh it being a little bit tighter um so we'll have to see. I think, uh, uh, you know, in the main, um, and or in the feature, I should say, if we get some uh, uh, early cautions, it'll be interesting to see if people come in er you know, early and fill up and, you know, try to see if they can go to the end of the race. The opposite side of that is, is if you f both fill up and change tires in these cars, you may actually end up going a lap down. Yeah, that, that's certainly a risk, and I think at the turn, it's dependent on where you're at. Uh, like, if you're somewhere near the back uh, and you're single file coming in, that, uh, you know, a little risky there, uh, uh, you know, changing all four or anything like that. It's on the pace car, are off, and it is time to go back racing. With Justin Fuller leading us to green single file, and the green flag's waving, and he is 
Often gets an amazing jump, but we'll see if anybody decides that it's time to go ahead and throw one in. No, we're gonna be single file. It looks like Joe Densmore gets a little bit squirrely going into the turn. That's gonna open up that low line for Paul Nelson. And we'll see if that 16 is able to get himself back up inside as we see Don Runkle Jr. doing everything he can. Get back into this conversation for a podium in the B main. Yeah, you know, you, you get you get a lot of guys. I mean, Runkle Jr. up five spots, which is a killer. Um, Jeff Sharp sitting back there up three spots. Um, you guys, we haven't talked about. Um, so uh, yeah, I think um, uh, you know as we see there uh, a little bit of side by side. Uh, Seventy six, I think is that uh, Sharp, yeah, yep. um, and forced on his inside. Um, close to touching there. You, you, I feel like every time you switch the camera to somebody, uh, they're about they're wrecking or about to wreck. So, so who who are you rooting against right now then? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> let's go to the front and Justin to where they, he's put up such a gap right now. I want to see it close down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just 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 have him spin and still like keep the lead. That that would be fun. Um, yeah, he, he's putting on a clinic right now. Um, and, you know, there's not really enough time, I think, for tire wear to be an issue here. So um, we'll have to keep a close eye on him during the feature um, because uh, if he can set this kind of pace while also conserving his tires, then he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And that's the thing is, Carl, you were the one that was kind of keeping us abreast on who was running longer runs during practice not many people were yeah and it sort of makes sense with the heats because obviously you know sure you have a 10 lap heat you're not going to worry about running a 10 lap stint because really those heats are determined so much by where you qualify so um you're really trying to just do short run short run short run um but you know i did see some guys out there putting together uh, uh long runs and we'll have to see if it pays off for them I unfortunately don't have the data available because I got wiped the moment um, we, we started uh, uh, with the uh, uh, races. But um, we'll have to, you know, I'll keep an eye on it during the uh, uh, race and see if we have anybody making up ground as we are on our final lap here. Yep, Fuller going to Justin Fuller the gets there. that win. Yeah. Nope. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Chris, Chris, as he wasn't happy that crazy, he wants to go straight to the backup, so he's going to take quick care. Of quick business out of that one well and the backup is the one that has the new engine and so now we switch over to 10 minutes of warm-up which is the perfect time for us like i talked about a little earlier we need to find out about where the name nerf came from so we're going to kick it off with that video here before we get too far along i used to hang out before i started racing with you guys i used to hang out in a chat room on america online and it was called nascar race fans which the initials are NRF. And I made a lot of nice friends on there. And, uh, and so when I started racing on 10, I needed to make an ID. And so I thought I'll make a tribute to our, our, uh, our AOL room and, and call it NRF-91 because I wanted to race with 91 for my number. And so that's where it came from. And then as I started racing online and people started cracking jokes about like, well, what does NRF start, stand for? Are you going to nerf us into the wall? <laughs> so, so then I was like, all right, I'll get those guys back. And I made nerf my sponsor. All right. So, um, like I said, we still have a little bit of time, so I do want to give an update because obviously a big part of what we're doing, of course, is raising um, awareness, raising um, funds for the Limelight Foundation. Again, I'm going to put up that info for Lyme disease information for what it is and get some more info on that. Um, and I also do want to mention, like I said, I've been working back and forth a lot with the people over at the Limelight Foundation. And so basically we had two options. We had basically entry fees that went, were sent over towards to me. Um, and then once I collected all those funds, I'm going to then donate that over to the Limelight Foundation once I put my part in as well. Um, however, some also direct 
donated directly to the Limelight Foundation. Um, for those that are watching on YouTube, if you look to the bottom of on the it has the text info of the race itself. Um, at the bottom, it'll say all proceeds um, to Limelight Foundation. I have a, a Bitly link there. Um, that is where you can donate directly to the Limelight Foundation in Steve's honor. Um, and so they have at the moment at $232 that they have had donated directly to them. And then I'm going to pull open my little cheat sheet here. Because what we were doing here, Carl, is we were going ahead and just we were getting basically donations from from um, drivers that wanted to race. There was no, there was no like, hey, it's a minimum of this much or whatever. It was just whatever you guys feel comfortable doing. And we've had a total of thirty-seven individual people donate to um, to tonight's event, and um, not including the two hundred and thirty-two dollars that has been donated directly to Limelight. Um, you can add on top of that $1,047.28. So we are over $1,200 over to Limelight Foundation so far tonight. Um, so just, again, I mean, what we have, the, the group of people we have, the, the friends, the relationships we make, um, it just, it blows me away. I mean, it doesn't matter who it is or what it is. I mean, it. I guess in this case, it kind of doesn't matter who it is because, I mean, again, everybody talks about Steve with the fondest and kindest words. I mean, he is just the absolute, he was just the absolute best person. Uh, we Everybody's joked, like, have any of you see, ever heard Steve mad? And I don't think anybody ever said they, they did, if I remember right, Carl. I'm, I'm going to disagree. I'm pretty sure he was mad at me one time, but he mostly just went quiet. Yeah, but I, I remember that race, but that 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 is the... <laughs> perfect epitome of it he was the person that even if he was mad he was not going to be take no. it out on anyone no he was he was without a doubt one of the kindest people i have not just in i racing one of the kindest people i've ever met um i'm so glad that uh this group was able to raise this sort of money for the foundation in his honor um i'm sure he would have loved seeing this i'm sure he would have loved participating in this yeah, and probably also would have been like, I don't want this attention, guys. It's, it's all right. Don't worry. <laughs> That's probably also him. But uh, I got to grab another one of the guys here. We're going to grab Joe Dinsmer because Joe's, I mean, we talked about him playing during the race tonight. But Joe also one of Steve's good friends as well. So Joe wanted to pull you in here. Um, be able to, I'll say it's kind of same for you. I'd say we, we talked to Swanee a little bit earlier. We've talked to John. We talked to Nick. Um, but I mean, obviously you guys being teammates for so long and, and especially being part of AOL, L, AOLL together for so long as well. I mean, is there, is there a, like a, any story with Steve that sticks out to you the most that you'll always kind of keep in, keep in your back of your mind? Yeah. I always loved having uh, burgers at his place on his perch he, porch. He loved having, having burgers and my family came up and I saw him and, and, uh, you know, having all-nighters practicing for our open setup leagues and you know he was a mentor of mine um you know I, I miss him an awful lot so but yeah i mean yes yeah, you know steve was always welcome him he's such a nice guy he talked to everybody you know he always had listened to anything that anybody had to say and you know i, I just can't say enough about the about the gentleman so i miss him an awful lot yeah, definitely gonna be a shared sentiment throughout throughout the group here and with many many others as well. But um, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's it's good knowing though that we can get this kind of a, a get together. I feel like in in honor and memory of him. Um, I mean, and saying there's there's a handful of people who weren't able to make it tonight that wish they could have come. So I mean, it, yes. it just shows the reach that he had between all leagues. Like I said, I mean, he, obviously. I mean, I want to say there's probably about at least a handful of leagues that I'm I'm aware of, and probably more. Um, it's it was pretty amazing what kind of the reach he had. Yeah, I mean, I raced with him in what was the league called AM Thunder, which I don't know if that's still around. That was on Sunday mornings, and then Saturday night league SNL, which was a league late Saturday night. Um, when we did some Ironman racing, um, that uh, long before. Um, even i racing was around we we uh alpha tested i racing together we did a lot of other sim stuff together we you know i, I can't you know 
express how much uh, he's influenced the sport himself um, that we do for sim racing, being involved as much as he was. Yeah, definitely agree. So, uh, so now you got to turn your focus over onto the race. Looks like that car had some pretty good pace there tonight. Um, got yeah. a little. There's definitely a little wild there at times. I mean, what are you looking for now? Because now it's the the 91 lap or caution laps counts. I mean, um, there's strategy we were talking about. Do you do you maybe try to put the fuel into the end earlier? Does that change the handling too much? You don't like. I mean, how how do you balance how you want to run this race to try to see if you can get a top three or try to get that win? Well, I had a really terrible qualifying, so. I'm just going to pace myself and wait for the tires to come in. And I got some pretty good long run speed, I noticed. So I'll just have to wait for that to happen and just, you know, do my best. I'm hoping just to have a nice, clean race. Hopefully finish in the top five. That's going to be my best, my, you know, my goal. So right, well, yeah, I was, 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 was going to ask Joe. I, I know that uh, uh, you've certainly beaten me on uh, long run speed quite a few times. And um, I, I imagine you're going you're to be out there uh, conserving a little bit, uh, maybe dragging those brakes, trying to see what you can save out there in terms of those tires, right? Yes, sir. That's what I'm going to be doing. I have, I'll be a little bit further back this session, so I'm going to going to have to hope that tires, my tire strategy works out. It's going to be run. a long one, but at the same time, both Carl and I have seen you uh, pull these kinds of things off more times than we care to count because I don't have enough fingers. But oh, yeah. <laughs> definitely looking forward to seeing you out there. Just don't get up into the marbles. Oh, yeah. I will not. All right. Thanks, good luck, gentlemen, Joe. for putting this off and putting this together and all the sponsors and the foundation and everything. So I can't thank everybody enough for putting this together. Yeah, I agree with you, man. So go have some fun, though, tonight, Joe. And yeah. we'll look forward to seeing you on track here, man. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. All right. Well, I had a quick request over on YouTube. They wanted to, they wanted to hear about where the name Nerf came from. So I'm going to replay this one one more time for you all. So for those that maybe missed it, where the Nerf name Nerf came from. So we'll replay that for you just a moment before we kick it off for our race. Uh, so stay tuned. I used to hang out before I started racing with you guys. I used to hang out in a chat room on America Online, and it was called NASCAR Race Fans, which the initials are NRF. And I made a lot of nice friends on there. And uh, and so when I started racing on 10, I needed to make an ID. And so I thought I'll make a tribute to our our uh, our AOL room and, and call it NRF-91 because I wanted to race with 91 for my number. So that's where it came from. And then as I started racing online and people started cracking jokes about like, well, what does NRF start stand for? You're going to nerf us into the wall. <laughs> so, so then I was like, all right, I'll get those guys back. And I made nerf my sponsor. All right. And with that, it is time to go racing here. So I'm going to hand it off over to Carl, who's going to run through our starting grid for tonight's event. All right, well, there it is. All right, starting in first is Anthony DeBarro, and in second, Ross Cato. Third is Steven Taylor, and in fourth, Chris Rebell. Fifth, Chad Cole, and sixth, Nick Cohen. Seventh is Garrett Boyd. Eighth, Nick, or sorry, Jeffrey McConey. Ninth, Dan Walker, and in tenth, Casey Miller. Eleventh is Mike Grandy Sr., and in twelfth, Ryan Munoz. In thirteenth, we've got Justin Fuller, and in fourteenth, Chris Cabot. 15th, Joe Dinsmore, and 16th, Paul Nelson. 17th, Don Runkle Jr., and in 18th, Kevin Schmidt. 19th is Kevin Haas, and in 20th, Norm Pelletier. 21st is Jeff Sharp, and in 22nd, Ross Gage. 23rd is John Borst, and in 24th, Justin Rector. All right. Through that, we even got through the first of the pace laps. Yeah, we're uh, we're getting going here with 24 drivers, 91 laps. Um, I think this is going to be a really good one here, guys. 91 laps is going to completely change the game from anything we have seen. No hey. doubt, and I, and I think it's just 
first of all, I think you're going to see comers and goers. You're going to see some guys who are, uh, uh, you know, driving a little more aggressively um, and uh, therefore pulling away early and then uh, falling back. Um, and then I think you'll also see a, a little bit of fuel strategy as well, uh, assuming we're able to stay green, which I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed there that, that we too stay green. Um, and uh, interesting enough, it seems that uh, not only are caution laps counted, but pace laps are as well, because it's saying we're on lap two, at least according to the software. Well, it's going to change as we go green, and Anthony DeBarro gets an amazing jump out to the front of this race, and they're going two by two right behind him and we've got 24 cars on track and that is double the most we have had so yeah I was saying it wouldn't be a race if it didn't start breaking right off the bat for me here again boys all right well hey we'll, we'll i'm sure we'll figure it out you, you know what you did last time right <laughs> um, i'll try so uh yeah we've got uh, uh anthony DeBarro out there who has uh, built up a sizable lead already Steven Taylor there, a little bit of a lead as well, a little bit single file, and uh, they're staying single file until you get back to around uh, seventh, eighth, um, where they're uh, a pretty big uh, mess of them back there. And that's that's the kind of thing that I was expecting to see with 24 cars on track. These guys know that once we get to single file, it's probably going to be the entire way around this half mile ish track. So. Now you got to get your track position, do everything you can as we have contact and somebody is on the grass on the inside. That's Fuller on the grass, I believe. Um, and that is not going to bring out the caution. And that's yeah, unfortunate for Justin Fuller. He was fast and just not had a lucky evening. Well, yeah, you know, but that's all right. It's still, we are still super early in this race. Um, uh, it seems... Uh, the lap counter isn't incrementing, but everything else seems like it might be working, so I think we're okay. Um, well, we're on lap uh, six of everything. Yes. And right so, now, we've um, got a side-by-side -side for seventh and eighth? Maybe? With Jeff McConey and Nick Cohan to where two of the instrumental guys in this race. Just, you know what? Have a good time. <laughs> yeah, you know, just staying side-by-side -side and um, you know, obviously that inside line is, is going to be preferred, but you can make it work on the outside. And actually, he's trying to cross over here, try, but I, yeah, not going to be able to get his nose there, so that's not going to work out for him. Oh, going around. We got a car around. That and, is Dan oh, Walker. Oh, that is somehow, that is, uh, that is the caution. Yeah, Ryan Munoz, Dan Walker is around as well. I thought I saw another one there, but. I'll Was see John Forrest involved? I think. John was further back. We'll go back. We'll try to see if we can catch a better look at all of this here. Oh, well, it looks like the yeah, 12 and the 74 make the initial contact. Oh, and then the 47 trying to get up top there. Catches Casey. That was the other car I saw. It's Casey Miller uh, in the 05. Okay. Oh, look at Chris Jabot squeeze the middle there. Is there any way we can look at it from his in car view? Oh, we sure can. Let's do that. Oh, that's the way we want to see this a little more there we go let's switch over to that 25 machine once we can find them my timing is scoring because everybody's jumping around everywhere <laughs> there we are Ooh. <laughs> you could hear the throttle kicking around there too the whole time and so the thing that this can be interesting here is I'm again, I'm still trying to make sure if I can get some stuff functioning for you all again, I apologize. I don't know why it broke again, but we did have a handful of drivers pit there from about 19th. looks like Chad Cole on back. Some will be yeah. for damage. Some will be for maybe some fuel strategy. Again, we talked about it. these guys can maybe try to pull us, uh, uh, pull a move off here. And yeah, checking time is scoring, still not working. Um, and I'm listening to the driver chat going on here. People are asking the question of, can you take four tires and stay on the lead lap? It's going to be questionable. Yeah, and, I, 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 honestly, I think, again, it, it goes back, unless I was confident on it, uh, it goes back to where I'm in in the field. If I'm sitting in the back and, no, and I'm the only person pitting, no way am I taking four tires. Uh, it's just it's too risky. 
Um, but further up, you know, if you're the leader coming in, eh, maybe you might be able to pull it off. Yeah, but it's still going to be questionable with a field this size. But they're lining themselves up two by two, which means it's time to get back to racing. Yeah, and ignore the ticker on the left. Still trying to get something to come up, and it's not cooperating. Well, add, a, add a one to that. It, we are on lap 12, coming to the line. We're going to be starting 13. The pace car is up. And Steven Taylor is going to get us into turn one. He's going to be completely clear. Chris Rabel is right there behind him. And look, oh, that's a little bit of a bobble. And that's going to bring the field and check it up to where we're two by two for the top eight spot. And whoo, this is going to get dicey. Yeah, it certainly is. I feel like they are a little bit more aggressive this time around um, than we were the uh, first stunt. Um, as we see side by side racing really throughout the field. Hey, yeah, these guys are sending it in deep at this point and it's two by two pretty much through the entirety of this field right now and i wouldn't want it any other way yeah this is the way to and do it Stay we green have and caution oh well i say it and then <laughs> uh possibly chris gabo paul nelson maybe involved yeah as well. it looks like chris paul nelson yeah that's what i'm seeing as well let's take a look We'll jump on back here. Let's look for that 25 machine. Oh, and yeah, you can already see up ahead, actually. It looks like I almost wonder if this might be a, like you see how close the 51 and the 16 are. I'm wondering if it actually maybe starts around that 16 of Paul Nelson. Let's take a look at him. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say, oh, Fuller involved as well. That's a, oh man, big hit for the 74 is there too. And there's Chris that didn't make, oh. My goodness. Yeah, and it looked like that may have started off as the netcode gods were trying to give them a bit of a chance. Yeah, like, I their, their, their tires were inside of each other. And th sometimes that's not a good thing. And yeah, it looked like it was going to try to give them a chance to get themselves separated, but when you end up on your lid, oh, that is... That's 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 a that's a tough break for Paul Nelson there. You hate to see that. Um, uh, obviously, gonna have to tow there. Yeah, and we got a bunch of cars in the pits from that too. Fuller was in as well. I think he's back out now. Um, and um, knock on. Well, I don't have any wood near me, but knock on Simrig Metal. Um, we got timing scoring back as well as you can see. We're on lap 18 of 91. Uh, this is not the first yellow, however. Um, but we're not too hey, worried about that. Working. We just want timing and scoring. Yeah. Hey, I can watch that and actually be able to tell what the lap is and not have to turn too far. So the minimal amount of turning is what you want in broadcasting and in racing because turning too far is going to burn up that right front tire. I'm really good at that, though. <laughs> that's about my that's about my abilities as well there. But um, so but I feel like, OK, so I don't think we've talked about Steven Taylor very much tonight up until now in this main. I don't know if it's just me. I think you're right. He's been, he's having a quiet night, but all of a sudden, and I'm, I'm looking even at lap times, I mean, um, consistently uh, putting together the fastest uh, averages of anyone. I mean, being up front right now is certainly helping him, um, but yeah, he, he is looking really fast right now. Kind of nice that you want to have. You want people to not be talking about you until you're in the lead as he's going to go ahead and lead us to the green. Doesn't quite get the jump that he did the last time, but he's still going to be able to get all the way up to the wall coming out of turn two, and these guys are going to stay side by side, and the chaos is just going to continue to reign supreme, and I want it. Just keep it going, guys. But keep it green. I want both. I, I, I want to stay green. I want to see some tire wear, uh, but let's keep racing the whole time. Let's not go single file. No, well, and that, then there's that's... the pit strategy, too. Yeah. And we've got quite a few people that have made their way into the pit, still on the lead lap, but it was all this last caution. And if they filled, they're good to go to the end, and they'll be able to cycle through no matter yep. when top, the top, pit stops top, come. Top 10 have not pitted yet, um, but you have to think there's a good chance that those guys that have pitted... Um, 
their cars probably feel a little bit like a handful right now, so they might be taking it a little bit easy trying to burn off some of that fuel first. Yeah, and that's where I'm going to be very intrigued to see as I will try to jump find our first battle here, and that's right around there. Casey Miller, we have talked about Casey being up front um, earlier in those heats, and um, yeah, he's pretty much running that second lane, one of the first ones doing so. Of course, as soon as I say that, I see Ross Cato up top there, um, but I don't think that's by choice. I think that's because Jeff McConey, uh, so he is working. I mean, we saw how big moves he was making in his heat. Uh, that I uh, say he may have donated the setup, but he also looks like he knows how to drive that thing too. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you what. Talking about fuel strategy, looking at the guys. Uh, so Anthony Devaro just moved in the tenth. He's your top guy uh, uh, who did pit um, earlier. Um, I, I honestly, I mean, if this thing can stay green, this is their race to lose right now. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the risk reward, and, and that's also if they did fill to the to make it to the end. I mean, you would have to think if those that weren't involved in incense said, you know what, I want to put the fuel in to make it to the end, and that's what they did. So, but then, will there be Tyra? Let's say we get a 30, 40 lap run in. That's when the rest of the leaders are going to have to come in. Then do they say, oh shoot, we maybe need to get some tires on this thing? Yeah, I mean, there's always a chance. You know, if if they did. Um uh, take um, uh, you know fuel and tires earlier, and they, they got enough to the end that they may come in and say, you know what, you know, come in with the leaders and try to take a shorter stop by doing tires only. But it just depends on timing. I don't think that the tire, the amount of time it takes to change tires in these cars, you're only doing one side if you come in at any point. Yeah, and the guys that pitted. Lap it during the two cautions. That was the right move because you have to do it eventually. I know I said earlier that the car gets a little bit um, squirrely with a full tank, but it's a lot easier to manage a slightly loose car than it is to make a green flag stop under these conditions. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you what, um, I, I tried a few times to pit um, here uh, during the practice session earlier, and I don't think I was able to make it a single time. <laughs> and cut you off as right now, Steven Taylor is under pressure from Chris Rabel, and he is down below, and he's going to be forcing our leader up a little bit, possibly going to get those tires a little bit dirty. But it looks like he's going to be able to have the clearance coming out of turn four, and he is going to lead. McConey, McConey took it as well. Yeah, and I was, I was watching McConey there because it was basically if Taylor held on to it, McConey was going to follow him around the top, and otherwise he was going to follow Ray Ball on the bottom. Basically, McConey's like, whichever way this works, I'm going into second. Yeah, and I have to wonder if Taylor possibly burned up his uh, tires a little bit because he is dropping like a rock right now. Tire wear conversation coming back around. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Um, you know, because he's he's back to fourth and he's under siege right now uh, by Ross Cato and Garrett Boyd. See, I don't think we've talked about Mike Grandy so far tonight. He's in that mellow yellow car here. Uh, he is right around the top 15. I say he's been in a fun little battle here with Dan Walker for a little while. Uh, I say these two have been going after it for a number of laps. And I say, and I say, make matters worse, he's got actually he's got the loosest, fast teammates right behind him of Dan Walker and Norm Pelletier. So I uh, say there, he's he's got the the podcast buddies there, right right lock stern on him. Oh, but again, we're only a little past the third of the way through, and. Again, it's going to come down to some people made the right call. Justin Fuller working his way back up through the pack after some early trouble to where he's in the top 10 now. He's one of them that pit. Yeah, he Fuller's fast right now. Um, he ran a 17, just now 5-1, um, which is faster than our leader and actually faster than anyone in front of him. I'm trying to look through. Uh, yeah, he's the fastest person on the track last uh, lap, so... Uh, uh, Justin Fuller trying to move up to the field right now with those fresh tires. It, that's exactly it. Is you're at the back because of an issue. You know what? Let's go ahead and set ourselves up as he's looking to set his sights on Joe Dinsmore right there, take over ninth, and realize I don't have to pit. 
I really don't even need to be cycling through the field as fast as I am, but you know what? Sometimes you got to entertain yourself. Yeah, it's more fun that way, but I, I do. I am wondering, you know, well, first of all, is, is he someone that did fill up? I mean, did, uh, I imagine you do. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't, um, but, you know, maybe you just decide, like, hey, I don't like the way it handles. Oh, someone Ooh. in the wall. They're going around up there. You think that was Chris Jabot? Oh, that is. Oh, no. Big map. Yeah, Don Uncle Jr., Chris Jabot. I think it started off with Chris, and then it, yeah, it wound up getting big there. And I said, I just got an update from our YouTube. Yeah, you can see Chris Jabot right there catching the wall out of out of four here. So we'll back it up a little bit, get a look at that. Yeah, he, it just lost the nose there as you watch behind, uh, from behind here. But he's going to come up, he's going to pop that wall. And then just, oh, I think yeah. just the track just narrows up here. But I'm hearing well, that. You, you, you said you say he lost the nose. I think he lost all of it. <laughs> that yeah. whole thing was sliding. Oh, then 76. John gets oh. a piece. And watch. Here comes Don. He's like, I got it. No, I don't got it. Oh, and I've been in that situation before. You think you're going to be clear up there and just not. Oh, look at that, that 15. Those sneaking right on by there. Kevin Schmidt. That worked out well. And we got a lot of cars on pit road right now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that did not work out for those guys that pitted earlier. Um, obviously, they're up front now, but they're going to be on older tires. Um, you I know, see these cars are lifted up. They're taking tires here. Yeah, that that makes sense. Because, again, we've, we're have race distance, roughly, when we get ourselves back to green. And so, it, yeah, so rumor mill um, from the YouTube chat, though, from one of the... One of our spectators is there may or may not be an unlimited number of fast repairs for tonight's oh. race, not by plan. So there might be a number of drivers that have had some big issues and they say, well, all right, give me another car. I, I want back after this. Well, La Lastin, you should have run. You might have had a chance of finishing. Oh, 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 oh. you're funny. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I just noticed um, and I, I, I I didn't notice. Did anybody see Joe Dunsmore involved in that wreck? I don't think he was, but he had a mm. over a one minute pit stop. Um, so not sure what that was about. Uh, actually, same with Casey Miller, Ross Gage. I, I yeah, mean, yeah. how long does it take to fill these up with fuel? Yeah, that's true. They it could be slow fillers, but that, that just that, something doesn't seem right about that. Though. Yeah, no, thirty six seconds is I would assume the full stop. Okay, and that's and that's what filling all the way up. Maybe that's a four tire and fuel stop, possibly. Yeah. Um, are, are 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 these cars sequential with that? Like you can't fuel and change tires at the same time. Reality, yes. Okay, but I don't know if it's set up that way. In I racing, yeah. okay. But we are back to one to green here. To, uh, say not a big surprise, Anthony DeMaro up front. Uh, say I'm very familiar with that car on the outside of the front row of Chad Cole. Um, uh, saying he was actually trying to this this paint scheme. I uh, say may or may not have been involved in making. Um, it's kind of a a throwback to one of the teams that Steve worked for. Um, this is one of the paint schemes that they ran. So. Uh, this, this is what this car is based off of on that 17 machine. I'll tell you what, I think those guys that pitted earlier up front, they're in a little bit of trouble right now on old tires. We'll have to see if they can hold on. Green the flag is flying, and these guys are going. Once again, the person that leads us to green, taking advantage of that situation, gets himself clear. But right now, Chad Cole and Ryan, Ryan Muniz, they are doing everything they can to get themselves single file managed to pull it off and it looks like we're just gonna get to that point early this time around yeah I, for now until you see uh the guys that are coming with the fresher tires uh significantly fresher um we'll have to see uh uh if they can get up there and make it work yeah i think we see that seven Nick car there and i want to say is the first one on that did pit under that yellow i don't know what he did fuel only or or tires or not um based on the pit lane time is a 14 second pit stop so that kind of feels like fuel only to me um compared to let's say like chris rabel had a 23 second pit stop that kind of feels like right side tires as jeff mcconey is going to see if he can grab that spot regardless i am going to say that the uh mach 5 paint scheme that we're looking at that hits hits my I'm a heart fan. yeah 
Also, I just want to go back to uh, uh, the issues I was talking about with Casey Miller, Joe Densmore, Ross Gage. Um, their pit times were actually respectable. Their pit lane times were so long. So I'm not sure if perhaps earlier we had a wreck on pit road or something and they got blocked or something. Um, very surprising to see uh, a lap set or a pit set long. Oh, and I think oh, we, we just, a caution. Yeah, I think it was right there. It was, it was Joe was right in it. There was a bit of a stack up. And unfortunately, Ross Gage, I think the accordion kind of found its way to him. So he's going to, he's trying to see if he can get looped back. Oh, he has to take a turn. Oh. That's, that's a heartbreaker. That's going to cost him a few laps here. Uh, but we'll go back and take a look. And there basically, there seemed to be a stack up here. I don't think that was the right point in the race. But that's all right. We'll, we'll grab it here. But there was a stack up in front here. And you'll see right in front of Joe, they, they check up. Yeah, Joe catches him. I looked like he had gotten away with it. I thought the wreck was going to be behind them, but oh, okay. But then he drifted up a little bit there and caught the 76. So that's, that's what sent Ross around there. And then I, I oh, think that, that it's, yeah, yeah. Ross got into the back of Joe to where that we, 80 got into the back of the 95, the uh, 93. I've, 95. I, I, I honestly thought they were all going to make it through it. Um, <laughs> even though there was so much contact, but uh, just, couldn't quite do it. Um, tough break for those guys. Uh, uh, you, you hate to see that sort of thing. Yeah, so we're going to try some out. We have a quick yellow here. Um, so step away for just a moment, and we'll come back here once we get the one to go. Lyme disease when I was seven years old. I didn't know it at the time. Gradually, my symptoms got worse until my freshman year of high school, I was actually bedridden. For me, the ability to basically move on with my life, I felt like that was just taken from me, and I felt like Lyme put my life on pause. Now that I'm better, I'm getting ready to go to college. Um, I'm doing well in high school, so that's good, because I didn't know if I'd get a high school degree. We had never imagined that. When she was at her sickest, I thought, okay, how am I going to manage a child who's going to spend the rest of her life in bed and not even complete high school? And now we're starting to look into colleges, and you guys made that happen. Beforehand, we just said, well, when we can, we'll get that test. When we can, we'll start the treatment. And as soon as that grant came in, it was like, okay, we can do this. And yeah, I think all good good intents gone wrong here. So I think in doing that, I think I may have broken the uh, broken the timing and scoring again. So bear with me here. But boys, we're back to one to go. Yeah, uh, we're not going to let you touch things anymore. I say, yeah, uh, hands off. <laughs> Trying to get fancy. But lights on the pace car are off, which means it's time to go back racing to where that indiscriminate car is going to go ahead and make its way to pit lane and we're going to get ourselves back to racing in Anthony DeBarro just again an amazing jump but it looks like Chad Cole is actually going to be able to hold on to that second place position but that mellow yellow Mike Grandy just going to throw it in there into turn Ooh. three and oh, we are around. around that's yeah. a 74 or Dan Walker. Yeah. Able to get it going again, then. Yeah, okay. quick little That's spin working. and back going. Worst things have happened on those. Yeah. Let's see. I feel like that was kind of one of those accordions that found its way to Dan Walker. Well, and just here in the chats coming through, it looks like that may have been Justin Fuller hitting the wall and just kind of causing a bit of an Ooh, accordion. But a little nope. bit of a little bit of love tap there from the two. I think just going for the same real estate there. And eight tires are better than four. Just unfortunately, the person that was trying to use all eight of them is the one that came off worse. Yeah, it's indeed in that the way so 
Since I'm afraid to change to the caution screen, I'm gonna pull up another video this time from Steve here. It kind of talks about him getting into just when he got into racing and his hobbies and such. So, uh, so we got since we have a quick yellow, let's pull one more video up here. I was about 13 years old. I got it for a birthday present from a friend. I love building model cars, but I always did street cars, and I thought racing cars looked stupid. <laughs> like, who wants to make a car and then deface it with all these stupid numbers and stickers and stuff like that? So I finally decided to build it. I didn't know who Richard Petty was. And I thought, well, you know, this car would look nicer in yellow. <laughs> so, so I made it in yellow. And I had it displayed in my room. And we had a family friend. I lived in Richmond, Virginia at the time. We had a, a family friend who was big into racing and he used to go to Southside Speedway every religiously, like every Friday night. And uh, I think it was Fridays that they ran. And and so he saw the car and he just teased me relentlessly. And I, being the obnoxious 13 year old, was teasing him back like, racing is stupid. It's just a bunch of cars going in circles. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I want to go to something like that? And he finally convinced me to go out to Southside Speedway. And within like the first 15 minutes, I was hooked. All right. So bringing it back in. So, yeah. So for for Steve decided that that 43 card didn't need to be blue, need to be yellow um, as a kid there. <clears throat> and then I say what, what I love, though, is I mean, that's. I think a lot of people too. Once you know, you don't think much about racing, and then you go to it, and it's just like, for if for some, it just it just clicks, and that was that's been us, that's been him. Um, it's just uh, I love those fun stories. No, I, I especially love looking at that video just because I get to see a so much younger Carl, and when Carl had a magnificent beard. I still have a magnificent beard, and I still look great. Thank you very much. He's just older and wiser now. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I do miss those podcasts just because it was great to actually sit down and get to learn more about the people that we're racing with. Steve was one of the best ones because yeah, just so many great stories and just such a love for what he was doing. But Pace Car is off and it is time to get back to racing and Anthony DeBarro just getting great at these restarts he hasn't pit yet and i'm kind of curious if well, maybe he, he, he has pitted he has pitted he pitted at lap nine um, oh that i'm missing it because someone keeps resetting things. yeah <laughs> someone may or may not be breaking their their sdk over yeah. here at, at this point everyone has pitted it's just a question of did they take enough fuel while they were in there and will their tires hang on as we see nick cohen there uh one of those guys with fresher tires making a move uh, up to third yeah, and he's going to have a friend join him because Fuller sees that opening up top there. He's not going to try to let Chad slide up there. And, I mean, North Wilkes was a very interesting track, too, because it's not just a bottom-feeding track. As you can see, I mean, look at the momentum that's being carried on that top side. You're thinking, like, okay, hey, short track, I want to be on the bottom. And Chad's probably right now wondering, like, wait a second, why am I getting passed here by all these guys up top? Um, but it's just that's the the North Wilkesboro thing is you can move around here and you get some we good line. Oh, caution, oh caution. Big wreck, yeah. Just hearing a lot of tires oh, no, going. Joe. Oh, that is a whole lot of carnage. Yeah, we got a bunch of cars in this one. The 03, the 05, I think I saw the 42, which is, that's a heartbreak for Steven Taylor because remember he was. Oh, no. <laughs> these things don't have very good turning radius, so that that's understandable there, unfortunately. Um, but well, and when you have a broken wheel and yeah, so we're gonna start around. Looks like maybe around Ross, Cato, Chris, Rabel here. So we're gonna start with Ross. May or may not be related to him, but I showed him that he had a moment off track. I don't think you're focused on no, Ross. No, it is definitely not on that. It is all right back here. Yep. Oh, uh, and it looks like he's trying to avoid it. Wow, it's like same real estate. Oh, that was net code. That's certainly a net code to me. 
Uh, 29 tried to k- chase it. And these are some f- some fast guys. We saw how fast Chris was earlier. The 42, we saw how fast he was. Oh, my goodness. And then just these guys all get hooked together. And it's, where do you go? It's a parking lot. Yeah, uh, that's a wall right there. Oh, um, no. And- oh, that poor 03 car. These-, <laughs> these are the kinds of wrecks that I really don't like the fact that I run in VR because they can become nauseating when you're getting thrown around like that. Which one of us um, uh, got thrown up in the uh, air during that one road course race? Do you, do you remember that? I think it might have been me. Like launched. Uh, well, what's what's uh, what's the road course race with the uh, our course with the uh, corkscrew? I'm blanking on it. Oh, uh, Laguna Seca. Laguna Seca. Yeah, 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 Laguna Seca. And it was, I think it was me. And like I, ju- it was like just past the corkscrew, and like there's that bridge or whatever there. I and do like I just launched, that. like all of a sudden, just shot straight up in the air after you hit me. Um, yeah. And because you I was in lost VR. it in the corkscrew, and I was not. Yeah, I always lose it in the corkscrew. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> So, do we want a Steve Dale Jr. story? Yeah, let's do uh, it. Yeah, let's go we ahead. Steve Dale. We got two of them, too, so it's even better. Do you guys know what Dale Jr.'s handle was back then? Anybody remember? Anybody want to guess? Oh, wait. Steve. Give me a sec, because I think All I right. remember this. Okay, let's um, see. If you... uh, it was like Rizzo DE3, I think. Yes, exactly. Rizzo. Exactly. Rizzo DE3. Yep. I remember seeing him at one of the tracks and going, Rizzo! <laughs> He was like, "Yeah." <laughs> it was a it was a really interesting like not so well kept secret, but um Junior was amazing. He would he would actually come on and hang out in the lobby and and talk to people just like he was one of the guys. And then he'd go jump in a race and all of a sudden you'd see the race instantly fill up. And, <laughs> and it... All right, so that's the first of two DL Junior stories. Timing is perfect, but Pace Car is about to jump back in here, and we are down to 18 to go at the line here, boys. Yeah, it's I mean, getting Mike, serious now. Mike Grandy on that outside line finally getting a little bit of a switch up, but Nick Cohen looking to make that inside line work, and he has the traction, but not the momentum to where these guys are going to stay side by side for quite some time, but. You know what? That 27, oh. that's all he wants. Saw some Able contact in the back. Oh, Joe kept the play in the right direction there. Good hands by Joe. Yeah, you know, we're uh, up front. We're just Nick. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Kyle, can somebody else control it? Because. <laughs> oh, oh, 74 that's... over. The 76 is up and over. This that's isn't even commentator's curse as I have this one. This is just the cameraman's curse. But yeah, you'll watch right here the 76, 74, and they're three wide. I three believe wide. that's with the 42. I saw the three wide. That's why I was switching to it. It was like, this is probably not going to be a good time. And yeah. Oh, a little bit of net code. I mean, they were going to make contact regardless. Yeah. But then there goes the 74 up and over. There goes the 76 up and over. And look at Joe here. He's like, well, I know where I have to go. <laughs> and you know what? Just. Just a little tap. I mean, he almost had a chance to flip him over. I say you would have probably preferred that if you were Jeff Sharp there, get the little bump and get back on your on your wheels and start rolling. Because unfortunately, they both had to take toes there. So, um, but it's I mean, the it's the of Gage managing to just end up on the grass. Yeah, I mean, that's, there's worse things that have happened there. So, well, a quick yellow, and let's do part two of Steve's Dale Jr. interview, or not interview, but discussions. I remember doing a uh, early in the days of iRacing, doing a uh, SK modified race with him at Martinsville, and we we banged wheels going around one of the turns, and it was really it was more of a racing deal. But he keyed up immediately and apologized, and and I just thought that was so cool. All right, so unfortunately, I don't have any more Steve Dale Jr. clips because. Um, but I mean, that's what's fun though about this is you never know who you're going to interact with. I mean, um, I was I was war- I was talking with one of Cadell's teammates, uh, or sorry, one of Steve's teammates, Cadell. Um, he was in a race with who was that Indy car driver? I'm blanking on the name of. He's really popular in the Indy area. 
the Indy area? Yeah, Indiana. Um, do you could. There, there's too many for me to be able to just say, yeah, that guy. Just start naming off drivers. Will Power. <laughs> let me let me find the Indy. Oh, Connor Daly. So he was he was in oh, a race. Yeah. So yeah, he was doing a race with Connor Daly uh, earlier this week. It's just, but yeah, I mean, you can race with Dale Jr. You can race with, and then of course you got the the drivers that made their name from iRacing, and I mean it's it's cool how how big this has gotten. Well, you know, we we we've, we've uh, I think Adam Wood. I think he raced with uh, Kyle Busch one time. I think it was Adam that did that. Um, uh, we've had people I know that have been out there with William Byron. Like it, it's it's incredible. Uh, like you know, these big names who you can be out there with. But for me, it's always about racing with the people, um, uh, the people that aren't big names. Like you know, a lot of the guys that have been out on track tonight. Of course, you guys. Um, th those those are the people I enjoy racing with, and uh, that's the reason I still do it. Yep. All right, come back to here. Eleven to go. And another thing they mentioned, even though we're on green white checker TV here, there are no green white checkers, so these guys are gonna have to try to get it done in regulation. Well, False good... advertising. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think we're gonna have some cautions due to that. Uh, we'll have to see uh, if these guys can keep it clean, but I think they're gonna be sending it as we see uh, Nick Cohen there and thinking about it. We already have caution. Oh, oh yeah, quick yellow here, and I think it was Casey Miller towards the back here. Um, but yeah, we're we're getting some of the big names up front though. Say these are definitely ones I expect to see where Debaro, Cohen, and Fuller up front. So um, let's see what happened to Casey here though to bring out this most recent yellow. Um, let's jump back to that 05. and I see a little bit of left side tires on the grass here, boys. I just well, trying to cool them off. Yeah. I don't think that works. That makes it drifty. Well, as it used to. Um, that that he didn't even have any help with that, did he? No, um, I think that just just trying to get all he could on the track. They're just a little too low. Wow, that that's that it it is it, in my experience out there. It was tricky to get this thing to turn on its own. So that was uh, that's surprising to see. But yeah, but you're right though. I mean, going back to what you guys were talking about before that yellow and before we restarted, you're right. I mean, this is this is kind of what I love, like these leagues that we have. I mean, we've got probably about four or five different leagues that Steve was a part of that are all here because of Steve. Um, and yeah, and, and that's the thing too, is I mean, a lot of our drivers now that people stream on Twitch and so you get to interact with them and, and kind of kind of peanut gallery them a little bit here. However, I think these guys want to get this thing going. So they're going to do a quick yellow here, boys. We're going to get back to go with seven to go. And I think Let's that's the it. right call because I mean, it was a quick yellow. There's just a spin there. No harm, no foul. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna get right back at it here. Um, coming to six, or sorry, coming to seven. Go. That's what it should be, and let's get ourselves moving. As it's time, and unfortunately, this may cause a little bit of extra chaos. I that's what deal. we're here for. And checking up the field is Anthony Debarro. But Nick Cohan looking to get himself around the outside, take as much as he can. And we've got a little bit of wheel touch in there, and that is going to throw Justin Fuller back into third. But these guys, it's go time. Yeah, you have to think that Anthony DeBarro there is in a little bit of trouble right now with older tires. Um, but it's just a question of will Nick Cohen, Justin Fuller, and others have time to make this move on him? make the move I, in or make it clean too it's, i mean these like yeah. i said these things have nerf bars i say they're they're called nerf bars and we we got our boy nerf we're racing for here tonight so it makes sense they get some use yeah and i think we oh have mike grandy you. around yeah it was mike grandy i saw the yellow car in the background there and i think this may be another turn to grass situation there Hey, right before that came out, Justin Fuller set the fastest lap of the race. Oh, maybe a little bit of bumper situation there, actually. <laughs> Let's take a better look here at that 12 and the 21. Yeah, I think I think Mike slowed down. Yeah, I think Mike slowed down a little bit for Chad. Try not to get into him. And then, unfortunately, the 21 just didn't quite. And then, yeah, there's that grass. So it wasn't in, in a self-occurring grass situation. Just, unfortunately, a little bit of bump. And he about had it held there too which yeah, is a bummer so this is gonna be another one these guys are gonna do a very very quick i have a feeling a real quick yellow try to put this thing back to green if they can yeah we're already on one to green here 
So yeah, so these guys are ready. And this time it's going to be a double file restart because they went more than the one lap. So this is going to get very, very spicy here on these. So this will be an unofficial. So there you go. No green, white checkers. Here's our unofficial green, white checkered on green, white checkered TV here. Will it be DeBarro, Cohen, Fuller, Chad Cole, or will it be Garrett Boyd or someone from outside the top five? We're going to find out shortly as the pace car pulls off and Anthony DeBarro is off and gets a good jump, but uh, Nick Cohen right there holding with him. We'll have to see if he can make it. Oh, uh, nope, not going to be able to do it here. Um, he's going to have to be side by side on the exit there if he wants to make this happen. I think that he's going to necessarily be at a disadvantage because the number of heat cycles that have gone oh, through those around, tires. Around. And no we yellow. are white flags. Yeah, so we're racing to the checker. Give Anthony DeBarro the opportunity to get himself the win. Is Nick Cohan going to throw it in on the inside? There's no room for him there. Is they going to spin one another? No, that's a brilliant Oh, look at Chad Cole from the top side grab th second there at the end. Oh, my goodness. So it's going to be DeBarro still hanging, somehow hanging on to that car to finish in the with the win. Chad Cole sneaks by on the outside to grab second. Nick Cohan going to bring it home in third there tonight. Well, I'll, I didn't I'll, want to say anything because there were a few people out there in the comments, including um, your brother, telling Chad to go ahead and send it. <laughs> well, they just we got Matt to Wagner out there saying send it. I mean, watch this. I mean, you can't really see it, but I mean, you see them. I say they're they're going after each other here. Um, Fuller's kind of committed to the inside line, and then Chad just. I mean, he just pretty much sends this thing. He does, I think. I say just just rim rides it here. Uh, Fuller has to, I think, check up a little bit to avoid just completely run over Nick. Yeah, you see, try to cut left. But then the momentum Chad had over um, DeBarro there, if that was a little bit longer of a straightaway, he may have even had a chance there for uh, maybe a lap or so. So, yeah, so he's able to grab that runner-up spot. But, oh, man, I knew when you see DeBarro and Cohen together – and it's for a win at the end of these races, <laughs> they're they're gonna go after it, and that's pretty much what you got to expect to see there. I'm just glad we got to finish it under green flag conditions, as we get to sit there and watch Anthony just go ahead and burn what's left of those 82 lap old tires. Yeah, I, I honestly, you know, I. I I didn't think he had a chance, and that's being uh, uh, fairly optimistic about it. I, I thought those older tires, he just would not be able to hold them off. But, and not just one person, but an entire group of them. And uh, man, he sure did it! What an incredible run by Anthony Devaro. Yeah, I mean, it's not the biggest of surprises. He's very, very talented racer, um, and and that's again. I mean, you look at the kind of the leagues that you have here, and like I said, I mean, some of the guys didn't have the nights they were looking for, just the bad luck and such. But I mean. Again, like again, big thank you to Jeff McConey. Donates the the setup for tonight's race. He finishes sixth in this one. So um, <laughs> you see, he hooks the wall. These cars, man, these tires, they just grab onto anything and everything they can. It looks like. But before we get to the top three interviews here, Carl, I figure we should go ahead and pull up our final results here. If it doesn't break everything, we'll see what happens. No promises. Actually, I gotta hide all those things first before we do to that. <laughs> Looked like it was right until uh, other than that car there in the middle. Yeah, let's get that I gotta, car out of the way. I gotta show you how to do the car thing. I'll I'll show you how to do that. So, all right. uh, finishing in first is Anthony DeBarro, followed in second by Chad Cole. Third is Nick Cohen, and in fourth Ryan Munoz. Fifth is Justin Fuller, and in sixth Jeffrey McConey. Seventh is Garrett Boyd, and in eighth Ross Cato. Ninth Don Runkle Jr., and in tenth Stephen Taylor. 11th, Justin Rector, and 12th, Chris Rebell. 13th, Joe Dinsmore, and in 14th, John Forst. 15th, Casey Miller, and in 16th, Norm Pelletier. 17th, Mike Grandy Sr., and in 18th, Kevin Schmidt. 19th, we have... Um, can, can you scroll? Maybe. Uh, 19th, Chris Capo, and in 20th, Ross Gage. 21st is Kevin Haas, and in 22nd, Dan Walker. 23rd is Jeff Sharp, and 24th, Paul Nelson. All right, so, well, let's grab our top three here. So we chatted with him a little earlier, but he was probably busy trying to be an admin and do admin things. So we'll we'll grab him again here. That is going to be – I'm, I'm going to have to ask him, too. I wanna, I'm curious about this car number. 
<laughs> so let's go ahead and pull Nick on in over here. Let's say again, pressing the wrong buttons at the wrong times. That's all right. So let's grab that 747 here. Um, so, I mean, Nick, I guess the first question is, I mean, for me at least is, where's this car number come from? I, I don't, I'm not familiar with this, this 747. I'm used to the 21 car. I mean, I, I know you like to play flight sim. I mean, is, are, are you going for the pilots pilot approach here now? <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted to run something a little different and I know Garrett likes the 21. So I was like, eh, this is a good opportunity for me to run something a little different. And uh, I actually got the inspiration from a, uh, a dirt race that I was at, a modified head 632, and it had the 32 in the number like that. I was like, man, that's a cool idea. I like that. And I do like airplanes, and I do like the Boeing 747, so I was like, eh, let me see if I can make that work. And uh, I did. I, I, I like it. And uh, a lot of other guys liked it, too, so it was pretty cool to run something a little different like that. Well, hey, I, I want to ask you about that, that finish there. Absolutely incredible. Ooh. You were sitting there, uh, fresh tires uh, behind Anthony DeBorrow, who uh, was on older tires. Um, uh, it's, it looked like you went for it on that last lap, but, but tell us what it was like from your perspective. <laughs> yeah, I know uh, I know. Gaia was probably uh, shaking a little bit, thinking me and Ant were going to ruin the show at the end there. by Because uh, we're, we're, me and Ant were teammates, but we race each other hard, and we're always near each other. And... Uh, We've had some run-ins together being teammates, so I'm sure Gael, Gael knows all about it. So, um, But no, we, uh, as far as myself, yeah, the two tires really, we took two tires, less fuel, and it uh, really hooked up. I really felt like uh, the best car there at the end. I think Fuller was also really quick there. It's just, uh, you got to get lucky with the yellows, and Ant took a gamble on getting the fuel early there, and uh, it paid off. He got, the, he got the yellows at the right time there, and... Um, you know, I'm just glad that we were able to race and finish under the green. I was a little worried that we weren't going to get that for you guys for the broadcast. And I'm glad we put on a good show. Um, you know, that, that was the last two laps. I can't wait to go back and watch them. I'm going to go back and watch the whole thing. But those last two laps were exciting. I tried to just uh, set him up off a of turn two, and he kind of screwed up one and two. I was like, ah, here, here's my chance. And uh, I shot it down in there, but these modifies the bumpers line up. So, <laughs> It's kind of hard to move somebody out of the way. I got him up the track a little bit, and uh, once I got to his left rear, I was like, oh, no. I, the last thing I want to do was spin him, but thankfully, uh, it kind of shot us both down the track. We saved it, and uh, he was able to pull away with the win. But, you know, uh, more importantly is just uh, putting on a good race for everybody. Um, obviously, all the uh, the donations for Limelight and everything. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just very thankful of the turnout. Um, the good race, the good finish that we had, and we were able to end it under the green flag. No, it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. But I uh, say before we let you go, though, I say we've been pretty much asking everybody we've had a chance to talk to. Do you have a favorite uh, Steve moment um, from from your oh, years of racing with him? Like, what's your what's your top Steve moment? Um, it's tough to say. I have a few. Um, I. I'll, I'll 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 do a funny one and a good one real quick. I keep them real short. I raced at uh, another league at Court with Steve, and uh, Steve hadn't won a race in a long time, and he was getting upset that he wasn't winning. So I said, "Let's practice. Let's practice this week." So we ran a bunch of practice at Richmond, and and I showed him some things. And long story short, uh, Wednesday night when we raced, uh, he was he was near the front late, and all those tips that I helped him got him out front, and I was in second, and. Uh, he ended up winning the race, and he was so happy. I'll never forget that. That was uh, that was one of my favorite Steve moments, and uh, more of a funny one is <laughs> um, we raced. Uh, you know, I, I actually said this one in the drivers' meeting. We uh, Steve is never uh, an aggressive driver. We all know that he's very courteous and and um, respectable, and that's why you saw the turnout you got tonight. And I would always tell Steve, "Come on, it's time to be a little aggressive. Let's get a little aggressive." And he never would do it, but. The one time he was aggressive, uh, we were at Laguna Seca in the super late models. And uh, going into the corkscrew, he just overshot it. And there I go, trying to make the left-hand corner, and he blasts me right in the driver's door. And we, <laughs> we both go flipping out into the sand. And I'm like, that's the time he decides to be aggressive. But <laughs> that was always it was a real good picture of Steve like flying through the air about to hit my car. And uh, we, we always laughed about that one. So that, that's, one of my, that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah, that's that's the fun part. As I said, we all have have those. Like you said, the 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 good Steve stories, the funny Steve stories. Um, mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's so much fun. But yeah. Nick, 
like I said, I mean, hats off to you and John. Like I said, you guys put a lot of work in getting this set up and prepped and, and getting the word out. So I um, really, really appreciate you guys to for all the hard work you get put this in. I think, like I said, um, definitely apologies for, for the handful of technical difficulties. We try to make the best of it we could. Um, but, yeah, I – had a lot of fun with this one tonight, man. I, I know it's. I feel like it's only going to grow from here because, like, there was a handful of guys that unfortunately couldn't make it um, tonight. Mm-hmm. I say definitely go back and look at YouTube chat because it's something. It looks like a, a good friend of Steve Scott um, is saying that he he does that. Steve definitely talked about you all the time, Nick. So that's pretty pretty high praise over I there as well. That. So um, yeah. yeah, it's like I said, it's it's one of those. It's it's a very very bittersweet theme because I say we get to bring everybody together and and kind of celebrate him and and honor him and everything. But I mean, he's he's going to be extremely missed. But um, I'm glad we're able to do these things in his in his honor, though. Yeah, it's a lot of work went into this um, on my end, John's end, and you and everybody at Green White Checker TV. I know uh, running the broadcast stuff is tough to do, and I know you were working on the overlays and everything, and uh, it's it's a lot of work. And uh, like I said in the, the start of driver's meeting, it is kind of bittersweet. You know, we're, we're all gathering for a good cause, but obviously we would rather be out there racing with Steve. And, you know, I, I know there's so many memories that all of us here could go through. I mean, <laughs> I mean I've got so many. We played fantasy football together, and we would always... Uh, We'd always watch Better Call Saul whenever the new episode would come out. We'd always text each other, "Hey, what? Did you watch it yet? Did you watch it yet?" It was always, always fun watching that show and catching up with him and and his sister and talking about the different theories of the show. And you know, those are the those are the little things that I'm gonna miss a lot. Um, you know, so like you said, a lot of there were a few guys that that couldn't make it tonight, and uh, that stinks. But um, you know, I'm, I'm glad they were they were able to support in the way that they could. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just thankful for all these leagues, pro AOLL, RSR, area 51 court net code midget series. I mean, there's, there's a lot of leagues that, that really, um, you know, supported Steve and we're good friends with him. And, and, um, you know, that's why, that's why it shows in the donations tonight. So, um, you know, thanks, thanks to, thanks to you and Carl and Josh here for putting on a good broadcast. I I can't wait to go back and watch it. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. All right, thanks, Nick. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. All right. Well, I say I think we're gonna have the 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 people's favorite, if you will, here. We've got to pull up coming up <laughs> in second here tonight, because like you said, the everybody was telling him that that he had to send it. He had to send it. They didn't want him to finish there in second um, or third, but. Our boy Chatty bringing it home P two tonight. There, but I mean, you see Debaro, you see Kohan up, um, kind of. You've raced with them enough. You know when they get together, things are going to happen. I mean, were you just kind of like licking your chops there? Like, yeah, this this is about to come out perfect for me. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been there and, and watched that show a couple times. And, uh, yeah, thinking uh, maybe we might have a shot here being in fourth place, entering turn three on the last lap. But, um, no, it, it worked out, though. We got, we got second. Um, I have – it's been a long, long time since I raced this car. So, um we stuffed it into the wall a couple times and uh but we kept rolling with it um it was actually a pretty fun race um i think um getting kind of high side momentum pretty important i got pinched um on the bottom i think the second to last restart kind of just went backwards big time and uh ended up getting it all right back on the last uh that last little run we had but um I'm glad to I'm glad to be a part of this event. I really appreciate everyone who, who organized it and, and broadcast UG Bone for uh, painting up this this tribute car for for Steve tonight. Um, yeah, actually, can you talk about that? Because I know you brought it up to me um, to get this one together. But I say, explain for those that maybe aren't familiar with it, um, w- what this paint scheme is. Yeah, yeah. I wish I could remember the full story, but basically, Steve. I don't know if he volunteered job shadow or if it was a job during the summer of 76 from what I remember for, uh, for Lenny pond in the NASCAR cup series. And, and that was the, that was the scheme Lenny ran in the cup series, a Pepsi, Pepsi car. I, I just remember Steve running that a couple of times. If we ever have a, a throwback night for, uh, you know, usually coincide around the Darlington throwback and, and, uh, I'd always see him running that car. So I figured I'd, I do that for him. I really don't have any <laughs> any skin in the game when it comes to modified, so I figured um, 
pay tribute to Steve. Yeah, well, it's it's a great looking scheme. I I want to ask you, you know, a little bit about the race. You know, obviously saw you there at the end. Um, you know, on that high side, and you had everyone, um, uh, you know, on the chat saying that you needed to send it. Um, and, and you certainly did. Um, and and I felt like, you know, obviously there was a lot of momentum up there, uh, but it felt like you were really making it work. Um, did, were, were you, you know, were you on the high side a lot? Did you practice it a lot? Like, what, why'd you feel so good up there? Uh, that's just kind of way that it shuffled out with the, the restarts, double file restarts. And um, I kind of figured it might have been because especially in, in one and two, you really need to get a good run uh, off the exit. And uh, if you're on the bottom, it just kind of, I don't know, I just don't want to turn as, quite as much. But um, yeah, I wasn't really sure what to expect going on. I don't, honestly, I don't have a whole lot of laps at North Wilkesboro. I don't have a whole lot of laps in the modified. As I, as I said, I stuffed it in the wall a couple of times, just trying to figure out where that right front is. And um, luckily, it didn't get too bad of damage. Um, the uh, the pit strategy, the way that worked, um, was a little different. I think maybe some guys were confused about how the uh, the the fuel shook out. So just on that first caution right away, I came in and, and took fuel, and uh, didn't plan on pitting again. I felt like maybe I, I probably had damage there from catching the wall a decent amount but um i feel like i still had pretty decent speed so we're just gonna roll with it and uh it seemed to turn out okay yeah i mean you, you made youtube happy you had you had a handful of guys all cheering you on there and and kind of yelling at you to maybe not 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 cheering you on nicely but yeah pretty much saying like hey get it get it going there um <clears throat> I, I do have to correct myself it was actually a nerd that said to send it uh <laughs> yeah i said there's a nerd involved a favorite son and probably a few others but um all right so so chad we've been doing for everybody else's uh, say we've been asking them for for their favorite steve moments i'll say do you do you have one that kind of stands out to you uh just just him being a really kind person um it's hard to believe that we're having a memorial race for him tonight um that he's gone but um just the kindness he always had and he actually had a pretty good sense of humor we, we'd hang out on in discord team speak after a race and he he uh, he'd throw down with the boys a little bit kind of ribbing you and stuff so um, um definitely uh his kindness and, and sense of humor definitely definitely miss him a whole bunch definitely um had a big heart to see how uh, i'm just staring at this picture of him with button on his shoulder <laughs> the cutest thing ever and how he loved uh, loved his pets. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely him to a T. But Chad, <clears throat> great job tonight, man. It was fun fun being able to watch you out there do your thing. Um, so we got we got to go bug there, our last guy to chat with here tonight. But yeah, great job tonight, man. And uh, definitely look to to hanging out with you and spending some more time on the track with you, man. Yeah, thanks a lot again, once again to everyone that organized this um, guy L for painting this Pepsi car. It turned out really good. And um, you guys as well for Carl and Josh for broadcasting this. Uh, it's it's really cool. I heard uh, heard some good things that uh, Limelight was had some good numbers for the donations, and some of Steve's family was watching the broadcast. So um, I hope we put on a good show for them. And uh, again, really appreciate everyone showing out for Steve tonight. All right, great job, Chad. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. All right, well, that leaves us one driver left to chat with here. That is going to be our race winner in that number 27. Started from pole, finishes up top. Probably didn't feel like that was the way the race went tonight, though. But um, Anthony, I mean, um, to borrow at the end there, you see Nick behind you. We know you go, You both love to race each other harder probably than anybody else. I mean, were you pretty much prepping for just okay? I got to be ready to save the car. I mean, what's what's your mindset there coming into that final turn? Honestly, I was just uh, you know this whole whole deal is for Steve, and I mean it don't matter who finished first or who finished second or who finished last. I mean, it's just we're all here for uh, for Steve and the foundation, the Limelight Foundation. Uh, you know, as someone with I I had Lyme disease. I mean, you're never cured of it. It's always in your blood. So um, something I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, throughout life but um it's just i don't know going to the last corner going to the race is i just i backed my corner up knowing nick was gonna 
gonna give me a little tap love tap there so i i had the extra i would say 10 percent uh to go in the corner before i was on the limit and it kind of worked out and i was able to pinch him to the curb a little bit and somehow i didn't spin out i don't know i mean i, I think it just the seas parted and then i just was able to get to the line i was it was like i said it was a blast and you know i'm just glad we could put a good show on at the end there and and again it's for steve i mean it doesn't it doesn't matter who won who finished second i mean it just comes down to uh just remembering all our memories and everyone just enjoyed steve's company and in, in the sim racing world and and he he was always that guy that always brightened everyone's uh mood up i mean and and he was just he was just a special person yeah nuts that's a pretty much as say I think that probably sums it up pretty well for for pretty much everybody there too. But uh, so we've been asking everybody, so we said we got to ask you too. I mean, do you have a like a favorite or or a Steve moment that kind of sticks out to you that that you want to share? Yeah, I kind of I kind of go back to the old RSR days. I would say about uh, 2015, maybe a little sooner, and and I kind of came in there like a firecracker and. And Steve was one of the guys that wasn't afraid to speak up when I when I drove like a like a you know what and and he kind of gave me a hard time and I think just like throughout the years just I, I think I was able to gain his respect after that and and we had I mean to the pro days we had so much fun like it's just you know like uh, some guys like to take sim racing serious but it it is it can be serious but at the end of the day it's all about those relationships you build and. I've met some really good people, and Steve was right up there at the top. He was just the special guy. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I mean, definitely a sentiment shared by by many, and obviously, very many based on uh, what we were able to accomplish here tonight. So, I mean, Ant, it's it's always fun racing with you and hanging out with you and stuff. So, um, I mean, like I said, I mean, obviously, you weren't concerned about the result, but I mean, you still did a great job tonight, able to pull off the win. So, definitely a big congrats there to you. Um, so we'll let you go chat with your, with the, the guys down there and, um, and then, yeah, look forward to seeing you on track again here soon, man. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't, uh, give a shout out to you guys at green, white checker TV. You know, thanks for uh, doing this and putting this broadcast on tonight for everyone. I mean, I hope we put a good show on. I felt like, I know we had some crashes, but it felt like we had uh, some good racing in the heat. That photo finish was incredible. I mean, we, everyone was all fired up in, uh, in the chat. So, uh, like I said, thanks again, guys. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Carl, Josh, I'll say we're we're getting down just about to it. I say any any final thoughts for for from you guys here before we we kick things over and um kind of just kind of get back to the to the real world if you will. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure I'm looking forward to that. Um I'm I'm hoping we can actually do this again in the future. Um I it's definitely not someone we I ever want to forget. Um uh, someone I enjoyed uh being around on the track and off the track um and i i think he would have thoroughly enjoyed the race tonight um even if he might have been yelling at guys for cautions uh or more uh, accurately encouraging people to uh, drive a little more conservatively so um certainly we'll miss him um so yeah anything, anything from you josh i i think that honestly well a reasonable amount of people know that this probably isn't the way he would have wanted this to be want to be the center of attention, but I do think that he definitely would have been appreciative of knowing how much of an impact he made on so many people. And I feel like we may need to make this a uh, regular thing. At least once a year. No, I think there's definitely going to be through through probably through this group i mean you know i'm talking to cadell i'll say we're we're working on having set something set up around his birthday we'll probably be doing some special events so keep your calendars open around february uh expect to see some stuff over there but yeah i again i really really appreciate you guys hopping on and being a part of this one as well i say it means a ton um to me to to everybody obviously i and like i said it was the easiest decision for for any of us to do but then once once you get to it, like the the reality and the kind of just just how heavy it kind of sits on you, it's like oh man, like these are hard to do. But at the same time, you kind of you need to do them to to honor that person. And 
Um, I feel like that's that's one of those things where for us it's 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 one of those things like I said no no hesitations like yeah pretty much it's I think the the way to put it is like it's a, it's pretty much like yeah, anything for Steve. Absolutely. How it should be. So yeah, so before we finish up for tonight, I've got another video here that's gonna kinda talk about how Steve got into sim racing online. And then we'll have a little outro video as well, which um so definitely stay tuned after um I said we're gonna switch to the, the kind of the outro, if you will. Um it has a little bit of uh, a thank you video from the Limelight Foundation, um, as well as uh, another great video from Steve that um kind of again, kind of what a lot of drivers have talked about tonight, kind of what sim racing has done and like it's it's bigger than just the the racing part itself so um again really really we thought thank you all for watching for supporting us for being here for steve and his family um carl josh appreciate you guys a ton um same thing for john and nick for setting this up really appreciate all of you so everybody that watched on youtube thank you so much for being a part of it like i said this will be available to watch after the fact for drivers for family whoever wants it feel free to share the link with them um, so yeah, so thank you so much. Um, we hope you all have a wonderful and safe evening. Um, Steve, we miss you. We love you. Um, but we'll never, th we'll never stop thinking about you, man. So take care, everybody. This is, how, this is how I got involved in, uh, racing online. I had, uh, I'd gone out and bought, uh, NASCAR racing too. I was very excited to have gotten it after NASCAR racing one, which Randy, you probably remember racing that that was on Hawaii, right? Yeah. We had NASCAR one and then we went to nine, 1999 or something like that. I, don't know it, I can't remember, but it yeah, was, it was, it was one. There was, there's was nothing before it. NASCAR one. I actually built my own steering wheel because <laughs> uh, they weren't in the retail stores at the time. And it was, wow. not, it wasn't very good, but it worked. But anyway, if you remember NASCAR one, Talladega had uh, the trioval was such a kick that you actually like couldn't go through there side by side. It was it, it was crazy. Okay, so anyway, so I bought NASCAR two. Um, I for about a week I raced against the AI using a joystick, and then I think I went out and and found this uh, Thrustmaster NASCAR Pro steering wheel, and. That was really fun, and I I, I was uh, having a lot of fun just racing AI. And I think at some point, me and Justin, maybe even in NASCAR one, Justin Anderson and I used to race each other over over modem. So, because um, I've known him quite a while. And uh, anyway, so I'm sitting here one day, and my best friend finds the box for NASCAR two, and he's going through it, seeing what's in there, and this it's coupon for Total Entertainment Network. And he, he's like, it, it gave you 10 free hours. And I, I forget what the cost was after that, but um, I, first of all, I thought, you know, I'll never use 10 free hours. And secondly, he, he kept twisting my arm, but I was like, why would I want to do that? Because it's going to be humans and humans are not going to race as well as AI cars. So it would just be stupid. <laughs> so I signed up, and I think I must have used like eight of my ten hours the first night. Right, this is this league it couldn't have been a, a better thing for me to have fallen into at the time because uh, that's when I was had just become disabled and needed some kind of distraction. And it wasn't only the, the quality of the racing that was good, but it was the, the people were very supportive of each other and, and put uh, emphasis on friendship. And I've, I feel like I've made a lot of friends in this league.